think? It's very fancy. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Vile Files. I am Nick. I am joined by my very dear friend, Rumor Willis. Hello. It's one of my besties <laughs> um, that I've been become very good close friends with for the past few years, and I'm very excited to have her on. Uh, we have Rochelle with us. Hello. Um, I have my uh, <laughs> I have my uh, natural habits diffuser uh, running with our natural habits diffuser oils uh, that it will be on. Uh, available for sale in May. It's so uh, sexy. Yeah. That's the We're only doing... reason I'm here, you guys. I just really wanted some diffusers in my house. Because <laughs> uh, apparently candles are bad. <laughs> they are. Candles are bad. If you, You'll hear more from me on this particular Nick topic. Nick just broke my heart. He told me that candles are so bad. Think about what candles, candles do. You're like They're full of like paraffin. And, it's full of chemicals. Yeah, but uh, I never thought about that. I'm not like burning fragrances. a candle thinking about they're it. They're putting fragrances and chemicals to make it burn longer and smell good. And then you set it on fire. And then you breathe it in your house. <laughs> fair um, enough. Fair enough. If you put a bird next to a candle, it'll literally die. Well, I'm not going to do that because I I'm like birds. I'm just saying, you know, they're, they have <laughs> they have sensitive respiratory systems. So, you know, imagine your child is a bird. Oh, man. That's dark. It's dark, but... Wow. <laughs> You know who also has sensitive respiratory systems? Young children. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Anyways, essential too. oils are a much healthier alternative to uh, uh, making your home smell nice. And they have medicinal benefits like uh, relaxation, yeah. helping you sleep better, anxiety, uh, re- reducing headaches. Anyways, Natural Habits is uh, selling diffuser oils. Um, we are doing pre-orders for diffusers. They're out in May. Supplies are very limited, yeah. so we're doing a special launch. So anyways... That's that. And it's like Willy Wonka. Like every 10th person, you get you get a diffuser with Nick's face on it. It's not my face. It just says natural. And a they're, golden ticket. They're ceramic uh, stone diffusers. Um, they're very nice. They come in black and white. I Anyways. can't stop thinking about kids dying. NHOils.com. I I, I'm just saying, like, what do you think when you're spraying okay, that for breeze? Okay. Your- well, I'm not spraying for breeze in my house. You think candles are much different? No, I already, you know, uh, first of all, I went to a doctor a couple years ago. And kind of a woo-woo doctor, but I love that stuff. And he told me that I was allergic to perfume. And that, to me, was so Ooh, devastating. I do wear cologne. I mean, yeah. I love it. It's one of that's my favorite things. It's still not things. healthy. To, I mean, I pour cologne, too. But it's not ideal. Well, but. that's when I just started using essential oils. And I would just mix my own blah, blah. The thing about essential oils, too, though, is like, I, you know, people have asked that, like, they, they're meant to absorb in your skin, like our roll-ons. They're not a perfume. So, like, we don't put chemicals in it. So, they won't last. Like, yeah. like a, a cologne or perfume because they're... They put those chemicals in there to make them last longer. You want to reapply it, but yeah, that's a healthier alternative to. You know, I gotta do something because I just want to smell good all the time. Anyways, nhoils.com. No code is needed if you order <laughs> the diffu- pre order, pre- doing pre orders for diffuser oils. So and more to come, but anyways, I'm very excited about it. It's, <laughs> it's very sexy looking. Thank you. Anyways, uh, we have rumor. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I thought. I, I I was in the, the the news a little bit um, this past week um, for making out with a guy. How did you feel about that? The making out with a guy or yeah. the rumors? Like, was it difficult for you? I was a little annoyed just by how it came out. Uh, I had the call her daddy girls on my podcast, which will be that episode will be coming out in a couple of weeks. Lovely, great, lovely girls. They're very entertaining. Uh, and they offer some great insight. So I look forward to you guys checking that out. I was a little annoyed by them because they Why? Sh- because they showed up with a little vlogger <laughs> and then like, you know, making conversation with them. And then like their first like two minutes, like, well, how is, you know, what are you guys, what have you been up to? And like, kind of like, you know, warm it up for the podcast. I'm like, well, I made out with a guy yesterday. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Right, yeah. And like the guy's recording it. And obviously, you know, it's just so everyone knows. Um, I'm filming a TV show. It's called The Coop. It's with Funny or Die Productions. <laughs> Look, let me preface this. Um, <laughs> yeah. And well, that's the thing. It's just, I, listen, I, I'm secure with my sexuality. I don't care. I didn't want, any, like my only frustration with it is I didn't want it to seem like these girls dropped this video of this out of context comment about me making out with a guy and have it come across as some sort of publicity stunt that it was like for anything else. It was a job, uh, an acting job. I'm very excited that I, you know, have, building my acting career and, and be able to do things. And uh, so it is for a show and uh, it was nothing more than that. But I was, uh, I was, why? Well, I was, I was kind of, you know, and then they dropped this video and not tell me about I it. I can't believe they did that. Yeah. People know you well enough, A, I think to know that if you're going to do a publicity stunt, 
it's not going to be you making out with a dude. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I'd agree, but who knows? I, I think that's that's one I, of those I was times. Just sensitive you know, you to just have it. to trust the people that know you. People are always yeah. going to say things. Yeah, I know. But anyways, so just just to clear the clear the clear the other, I did get quite a few. Uh, text messages from some of my gay friends <laughs> and my dms did fill up um, they're like have you come over to our our dark side nick i mean i i don't think did any of my brad, gay, message brad definitely messaged me <laughs> <laughs> like if brad doesn't add he was like i'm i'm devastated implying that like why not him <laughs> the fact that brad's married too though but like no i don't think brad thought for a second that um if you guys made out, it would just be you making out with yourselves. You look exactly the same. I don't. I'm flattered by that comment because I think he's a beautiful man. But I don't like. I have like. I don't think we look that close to the same. <laughs> but I don't. Yeah, he was very playful. I don't think that any of them thought that I was actually like. Yeah. Um, but he was. He jokingly um, had some fun with it. And a few other. A few of my other friends reached out, just needing details. And then my DMs did. Um, <laughs> fill up with a get, get a little spicy I, I appreciate my my gay <laughs> fan base um and uh i'm thank you for listening if you are and thank you for following my instagram um you know i appreciate you i i'm sorry if i've uh, let you down by letting you know that it was just for a tv show it was fine though like whatever it was in this day and age i'm shocked that that's actually news it's like I know. why can't we just make out what I, we want to make out with <laughs> and listen i i i think I agree that it should be less and less. Like, I don't think in 10 years it will be news that way. But Let's hope not. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, that, yeah, that was that was, uh, that was. I've it. done that plenty on screen. Do you think that there's definitely a double standard, though, with men and women, though? Oh, absolutely. Because, like, growing up, a bunch of, like, you know, even as early as high school, certainly college, girls are, like, going to the bars. And what I've heard from some of my girlfriends who have done it and some of some of these girls will say I'm not in, at all attracted to women but like whatever because we it's knew a girl the, we're friends we're, we're friends and we thought the guys would be think it's hot guys don't obviously do that to get the attention from, from women I also don't think that women find it as attractive as men do when you flip that around right like I if you saw two guys making out who were straight to get attention, I don't know if you would be like, ooh, that's, I'm into this. I mean, especially if they were doing it for attention, I'd go, mm, that's like, okay. No, I know. Yeah. But I, but I think that there's a double standard also because, and I, maybe you could speak probably more to this than me, but I feel like there's some sort of guy fantasy of, oh, there's two girls and they want sure. me so bad that they're making out with each other to get my attention, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Whereas... I think on the reverse side of that, it's almost instead of two girls coming together to get your attention, it's almost, I feel like the girl fantasy is like two guys fighting over her to get her, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's yeah. a bit of an that makes sense. opposite dynamic. Yeah, no. Um, and Nick says he made out, like, yeah. Tongue, well, and tongue was involved. I was a little bit nervous. <laughs> tongue was involved. Listen, it's, uh, it's with funny or die. So it's think... Think more Will Ferrell and Sasha Baron Conan and less Brokeback Mountain. It's not going to win any awards for steamiest makeout. I just, it's just silly though that this this becomes such news. I don't know. It's just, yeah. even if it was, even if you were just like, yo, I made out with a dude, whatever. It's like, cool, man. Partly I wanted to bring this up because uh, next week, now that I'm, I'm I'm uh, I'm promoting all my future episodes. I see. Next week's an important episode for me. I have my parents on and one of my siblings, and one of my siblings recently came out as as gay. And you know, you know that, that the whole episode is not about that, but I'm very proud of my family and and how progressive they've come and understanding. And we come from a very traditional religious Catholic household, and not that they, we still aren't, but yeah. um, I am proud of how my family has come together and and supported my my sibling. And I, I you know I hope that people. People, um, you know, tune in next week. But I, you know, there is still kind of um, confusion and 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 sensitivity around um, sexuality and identifying with the different sexuality. And then for the people who are straight, who um, are in the majority, who don't have to face the fears of coming out yeah. and the judgment of being gay. And so for the people, I think I think that's where it comes across for the people who are straight who. 
Uh, you know, if it's like a guy who well, I made out with a guy or whatever and like whatever, um, gay people all the time are constantly ridiculed, sadly, for being or at least being fear, afraid of being ridiculed, especially yeah. if they're coming from uh, a more conservative part of the country and things like that. So I think that's where sometimes the sensitivity comes from. Absolutely. So I don't know. I just I don't want to be insensitive to it, but I, it's going to be a great show. Uh, I don't know when it drops. I'll let you guys know, though. But it's a great cast. It's very talented. Uh, t- Tony Hale's in it. Brian Husky. Uh, a lot of other people. Do you uh, make out with Tony Hale? I don't. Oh shame! I would have. Yeah, I would have. Uh, I would have uh, been down. You know. No, it was a. Also, it felt like nothing. It was. It was like a benign experience because I'm not. Yeah, it was just like okay, whatever. Yeah. I was nervous though at first. Then I was like, eh, whatever. I don't know. Time for Nick to sell you things you really need. But you don't own yet. It sure is. It's <laughs> so cute. This is my my favorite time of the episode. Um, I'm just gonna start off by saying I love women's underwear. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, I do. But women's underwear is not about you. It's about us. It is true. It's about us feeling good. It is good. true. I'm just, I'm just making a statement that I appreciate women's underwear and even the sometimes <laughs> well, not not the underwear you would think. Like the nude underwear. Whatever, whatever. Like, listen, I think uh, it's all it's all sexy and great. But <laughs> do you minus know, my love for underwear. <laughs> do you know how much um, bras cost? Too much. But do you know? Way more than guys' underwear. Yeah, it's a it's over an outrage is what I've is my understanding. Like, if you could guess how much a bra costs usually a bra. Yeah, twenty five dollars. Really. I've been paying $80. eighty dollars, eighty eighty dollars, and they don't even last that long. And you're they supposed don't? to have like three. You pay eighty dollars for a bra? Well, until this is a really everyone listening, you're really lucky because because Lively's here. Yeah. And what is Lively? Lively, it's really comfortable bras, and they're really affordably priced. Like I just got one for thirty five dollars, and they have so many different sizes. Like I have kind of a weird. <laughs> Weird. Si- I feel weird talking about my bra size with you, Nick. But um, I have thirty-two. You know, we're friends. We're, we're friends. friends. You can know my bra size, thirty-two D, which as is I hard cross, to find. As I cross <laughs> yeah, my it gets arms more, we both get more and more uncomfortable. <laughs> but they have all the different sizes, and they don't charge you more if you are a bigger size. Like that's a thing. that usually happens. Yes, that is a are thing. Larger breasted women getting ripped off. Yes, but Lively's not doing that. And also, it's like <sighs> they sell. They have this thing called the busty bralette, which. If you have bigger boobs, you can't wear bralettes, which are the cute bras you can wear under tank tops. Do you know about those, Nick? I really, I'm, I'm ignorant <laughs> when it comes to bras. I just. But I thought I had to give those away. I, I spent most of my time trying to take them off, <laughs> if I'm being totally honest. Um, <laughs> well, these ones, um, they're like, you know, you can have kind of like a looser tank top over it. And they have them for a bigger oh, size. Yeah. They're called the Busty Bralette. They're amazing. And I just got one. And so I'm like, I'm super excited for summer. But also you can look at their website here. I'll pull it up. It's really awesome. Wearlively.com. You can see they have, they show women of all sizes. You know, you're not looking at like supermodels wearing bras, which is just good for your confidence. Look at at all those beautiful women. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Super comfortable bras. And yours yours is comfortable. (laughs) Yes. If we're we're really getting in the weeds of it, Rochelle. Oh, God. (laughs) <laughs> What's the biggest gripe of a bra in terms for minus minus the price? So you pay outrageously yeah. prices for the bra. Yeah. What's a shitty bra feel like? Well, I mean, they say like most women are wearing the wrong size because we all like you know you should know we all look boobs are different. They, indeed, <laughs> they're indeed. all different, but all wonderful. <laughs> but like they'll be like coming out of the top or like the you'll have like the pooch on the side. Where the sure. top fat is coming out, which you don't want, or like the underwire is really uncomfortable, and they have um, strapless bras without underwire, which is extra comfortable. That so, sounds way more comfortable. Yeah, I so, wouldn't want my underwear to have wire in it. I'll be honest. I feel like feel <laughs> no, like that. Men wouldn't are be, so lucky. I feel like that wouldn't be comfortable. So tell them what they want, Nick. Well, how can we get our lively bras and underwear and more and more and much more? Well, it's really simple. For a limited time, get $10 off your first order by visiting wearelively.com slash Vial and enter code Vial at checkout. That's $10 off your first order by visiting w-e-a-r-l-i-v-e-l-y.com slash V-I-A-L-L and entering Vial at checkout, only available 
in the U.S. Ten dollars off, people. Ten dollars off, and most importantly, it's not eighty bucks. It's yes. comfortable. Yes. They have wireless bras for women of all beautiful shapes and sizes. Yes, we know Nick appreciates all sizes, and uh, can't wait to take them off. Is that oh, weird? <laughs> Is that weird? That's weird. What else do our people listening at home need that don't have? Well, like a lot of us, we don't get all of our nutrition from the food that we eat. I mean, all of us. All of us. All of us. Especially me. I just don't have time to like plan out my meals well. I'm a creature of habit, so I just eat the same shit right? over and over. I know. I'm like, and I can, tell you, I can tell you it doesn't have everything I need. Yeah. And also like I'm getting older, just to be honest, this is embarrassing with Nick, but like my hair is kind of thinning out as I get older. Mm. Like, yeah. Like lose, you lose hair. It looks good. Uh, same. <laughs> Thank you. Same. But also like, yeah. And your nails, you're like, your nails aren't strong. So Hum has these really great products. They're all natural, clinically proven ingredients that are highly absorbable, highly absorbable, non-GMO, free of common allergens like gluten, soy, selfish, and sustainably sourced. I, I have noticed, you know, it's it's inside out, people, right? Sometimes, yeah. sometimes I exercise to look good naked, and I have <laughs> I'm and and I have been lucky with a high metabolism, but I've realized that I've focused outside in and should be inside out. Yes, you know, and if you only look at care about your outside appearance, you're not taking about what's inside. But if you take care about what's on inside your body, you will look better. You'll have better skin and better nails and better, better hair, and that comes with the things that we're putting in our body. And that's one thing, hum definitely focus, focuses on. So you're going to look better too. Yeah. I mean, you'll feel better, but also. Like these are the Hair Sweet Hair gummies, which I love a gummy. And Who doesn't? Um, yeah, they have folic acid in it, biotin, zinc, and pava. And um, they also have really great vegan options as well. Biotin, that's, that's great for your hair and nails. Yeah. Um, their key products are Skin Heroes, Probiotic, Collagen Love, Glow Sweet Glow, which... I love, and then the hair sweet hair gummies. Vegan gummies for gorgeous. Can I just point out that they have vegan gummies for gorgeous glowing skin and low molecule hal high halodraic acid? I mean, I can't even pronounce it. That's how <laughs> that is how important it is. To be you, fair, you can't pronounce a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a lot to say, and I don't have time <laughs> to enunciate sometimes. Well, to get started, go to hum nutrition.com slash get underscore started for personalized product recommendations based on your goals and needs from their team of RD nutritionists. Enter promo code VIAL, V I A L L, for 20% off your first order. That's hum nutrition.com slash get underscore started and promo code VIAL for 20% off. I'm eating these gummies right now. <laughs> That's because they're they're I've had I had them earlier. They're, they're really so they're quite tasty, and most gummies will just rot your insides. These will help you grow hair. Yeah, I guilt mean, free. I, help you grow hair. <laughs> I mean, today, I actually had a half a bottle before we started. I could. I want always full luscious hair. <laughs> I'm I'm serious. Now go buy the stuff. Yeah. Short and sweet. How you doing, Rumor? I'm good. How you been? Um, you know, I'm in the process right now of Marie Kondoing my life. Recondoing? Marie Kondo. What's that? What? How do you not know? Yeah, the, I feel like this is so up your alley. Oh, the 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 Netflix girl. Yeah. Who yeah so she has the book, the yeah. life changing art of tidying up. Right. Yeah. So I'm one of those people, and I fully kind of blame my mother a little bit for this, but I, you know, will take my own responsibility. I feel like I'm like a collector of things because I always I always love trying new things. Sure. And I, I love knowing like literally down to sheets and products and whatever it may be. I love trying different things. And so I when I was doing uh, Empire in Chicago, I had an apartment out there. And so I just recently went and cleaned it all out and brought all my stuff back. And so my house was just overrun with so much stuff. And I realized I had doubles. You kind of already had a lot of stuff to begin Exactly. With. I already have a lot of stuff. Exactly. So I was just trying to kind of minimize and simplify my life. And because I feel like I just had so much clutter and so much stuff. Was this, are we talking about both like tangible uh, items or are we also talking about everything like your life and people? It's moving in that direction okay. as well. As long as I still make the cut. Yeah. 
going to Marie Kondo you out. Like, hey, Nick, I just, you're great, but uh, I, I don't have I can't fold room. you into the drawer. I don't have room for you. You don't spark joy anymore. Yeah, you yeah. don't spark joy. Yeah, you're nice to have, but like, you don't really add value. <laughs> There's no secret yeah. sauce on what you're bringing to the table. No, you make the cut. Okay. But I think it's important. So, and I even, Scout, my sister and I took boxes of, say, unopened mouthwasher things, say gifts that I'd gotten from swag bags. And we made a box and we're going to donate it, I think maybe to a shelter of some kind and had some food too that was unopened that we were just going to drop maybe at a, and some sort of encampment and, and just, yeah, simplify. I think that's my kind of motto of this year is to just simplify. Are you kind of a pack rat? Are you Oh yeah. I just went to my storage I'm the, the other opposite. day and I had so much stuff. Like I found this vintage like a camera that I thought I had lost to the wind and I was devastated and Scout found it. I was very excited, but I need to just declutter. I've, I have been pretty good at that. Like I'm not the tidiest person, but when yeah. I do like a spring cleaning, I'll be like, have I used this in three months and do I care? Gone. Doesn't I could, spark joy. Doesn't spark joy. Um, I'm, I'm pretty decent at that. Sometimes almost too liberally. Yeah. Where all of a sudden I'll be like, yeah, could have... Little impulsive got rid of that I, like a week later. Like I've done that too. I have I have some pieces of clothing that I think I just got rid of that I wish I'd kept. But also I just think for me, I have that type of personality where either everything is kind of organized chaos, but if I have the time and the space to get super OCD and everything has a spot, it's all container stored out, I'm all about it. It's so sexy. Mm. You said you you grew up like that, though, like your mom kept everything, too? Oh, yeah. We just, you know, there was always extras of things. And Is that the kind of idea? Like, I think people who do that, it's like, you never know when you're going to need it again. You know? Yeah. You never know. You never, I had, I, my roommate was like that. I mean, he had jeans from high school. Where I was just like. I mean, I have that, too. It's. They still fit. I mean, I know fashion's <laughs> cyclical, but like, you know, just. Well, it's hard, too, I feel sometimes as an actor because. And also, I love costume parties. That I have, I need to have. Yeah, it's great for Halloween. No, yes. but I feel like I need to have a section in my house, maybe in my garage, a rack that, say, you have an audition to play. I don't know, an astronaut or someone like uh, in a country western, or, you know, I've I've auditioned recently for someone in the military, and so I had things that maybe aren't my normal style, but that are more buttoned up or. You know, you go to a costume party. I needed to be a ninja the other night, and I realized I have a ninja costume. Where was this costume party you went to that I didn't get an invite? I mean, it's God. fine. <laughs> Next, we'll do another one. Man, of course, I, I'm not a. I I I wouldn't have these. I, I have. I don't have costumes because I get rid of this stuff. See, but then you keep them because then you just rebuy them. Just go to Amazon, yeah, and then you donate it again. Yeah, but why not just keep it? Because you, it's like. The space, because it doesn't spark joy for the 10 years you're not using it. A ninja costume will always spark joy for me. <laughs> also, like anything from the 70s. Sure. Come on, spark and joy. I'll tell you what, Rochelle. Hmm. I'm loving my open foot. I know, it's so... I get, well, I hate it because I don't have excuses anymore. Because I used to be like, oh, I don't have time to go to the gym this morning. <laughs> now you don't I, hate it. You also have been looking great, if I must say. Mm, thank you. You know. I mean, I'm I don't want like, to, like, I know we have a working relationship. We're keeping it professional, but I just, <laughs> I, I can say that in a very professional way, I've noticed that uh, Open Fit has been working. Thank you. I feel very uncomfortable, but I appreciate it. Oh, well, all right. Well, this is already an issue <laughs> problem. Anyway, I, I, I absolutely, I've said this before. I hate going to the gym. Um, for no other reason, it's 40 minutes of wasted yeah, time. especially in LA. Even like, even if you're like right next to the gym, like even if it's across the street, like <laughs> packing your bag, that's like at least 10 minutes of travel. Yeah. And then you have to go to the gym, you have to check in, you're going to stop and talk to someone you don't want to talk to. You're going to have to go in the locker room, you're going to change. Even if you are changing directly, it's just like weird. If you just, if if you worked out only for the time it took right? you to go and leave the gym, yeah. you would, people, everyone would be in amazing shape. Yeah. If, I, if they, if that's what they did. Yeah. Well, I think all of our listeners will be in amazing shape now. Open Fit has that, has that for you. My favorite classes are Extend Bar because you don't have to have a bar. You just use your chair and it's like, it's so, it hits every part of your body and it's just like really fast. Yeah. You can tell that it's working because you're burning. You can burning. put it on your TV screen. Everyone has smart TVs. You put it on your laptop, you yeah. put it on your phone. When you're traveling. You can literally do it anywhere. Yeah. And then I also do, there's like a yoga 52 class. I love yoga. 
But also, like, I don't really want to pay $25 a class for yoga. Who does? So I just do it on OpenFit and, like, gets me in the right mindset at the beginning of the day. I absolutely love it. OpenFit will give you all these different types of classes and exercises. Uh, you'll It'll get in better shape faster, and it'll also be more entertaining. Try something new. Yeah. Then you can go to, the, like, the, 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 you know, for the guys out there, my 10 percenters, <laughs> you'll relate to the women by, you know, saying... You know what? I took a bar class. <laughs> yeah, the men can take bar classes. I did. I took a bar. I can relate to you. I'm a, I'm a huge advocate of OpenFit. OpenFit has changed the way I work out, as I've already talked about. And with my code Vial, V-I-L-L, you can join me on a fitness journey personalized just for you. Again, use my code Vial and start using OpenFit for your journey to a healthier life. Right now, during the OpenFit 30-Day Challenge, my listeners get a special extended 30-day free trial membership to OpenFit where you can lose up to 15 pounds in 30 days. When you text Vial, V-I-L-L, to 303030, that's 303030, you will get full access to OpenFit, all the workouts and nutrition information totally free. Again, just text Vial, V-I-L-L, to 303030. Standard messaging and data rates may apply. Get ready for summer. Get ready for summer, y'all. So ever since I've known you, you've been a very focused person in your career. You've done some great things um, like, uh, well, actually you won Dancing with the Stars before I met you. <laughs> I watched all of Rumor's dances before going on Dancing with the Stars. And before we were friends, I was you obsessed. Really? She yeah. was so good. So good. Rumor's are incredibly talented. Uh, dancing's like a hobby. <laughs> because she's what she's really good at is singing and acting. Um, she's very talented. Ta- like dancing is like me roller skating. Like I'm good, but like I'm not a pro. Guys, he's really good though. Um, we went together because I really enjoy it, and I was shocked and kind yeah. of upset. <laughs> I was really mad. She, we're very competitive, but like yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good, but like I'm not like. And that's how rumor is dancing. Awesome. She's so good, but she's really good at singing. Mm-hmm. She's really, it's in. Uh, I feel like I'm a better dancer than you are a roller skater, though. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I can't argue that. You're That's an incredible fire. dancer. <laughs> You're, you, were, you were really good. I watched, I, I mean, I, I watched all of her dancers. <laughs> Did you fangirl out? Did you fangirl out when you met her then? No, I mean, not, no. Um, well, it's interesting about fangirling. <laughs> I fangirl, fangirled recently. Uh, when I met David Beckham oh, uh, right. last week, and it was funny because I did all the things I that people have done to me that I have judged. <laughs> I've, I've fangirled <laughs> twice in my life, and I realized this. I was talking to a rumor about this. It's with uh, it's fascinating because it's not. I've met some. I've become friends and met some pretty big names in Hollywood that are that are women, and it's cool and it's exciting. But I'm not like they're people, and yeah. But when you meet like someone you grew up admiring, and it's for me like men who like I think are cool or like I want to emulate, David Beckham being one of them. The only other time that ever happened was when I met Rumor's dad at her birthday, <laughs> <laughs> and I've met I've met her her mom, and like it was you know I grew up watching your mom, and it was like oh that's cool, but immediately she just felt like a mom, yeah. you know, and I was quickly started asking her advice of what we were talking. When I met your dad, I was like. And he was very polite. And I was just like, <laughs> hi. And then there was, it was at your mom's house. And she has a, a big house with different door, wet walkways. And there was a time I went back to get a beer in the kitchen. And I, your dad was standing on the doorway, just leaving <laughs> plenty of space. Yeah. And I looked and I was just like, <laughs> you know, I'll just take the long way around. Because I don't want to, I just, I didn't want to fuck up. You know, like, and it was just like, this is Bruce Willis. He was, he was just I, I was just such a huge fan of, 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 of your dad's growing up. It was like meeting kind of like your childhood hero. It's a, it was a weird feeling. I never thought about it. Um, it, it so yeah, but anyways, I, I, I'll walk into the coffee shop and David Beck comes there. And I walk in, I notice him right away and I'm just like, oh, that's David Beckham. That's, I'm like, and I'm in my, I'm, I'm like, gosh, be cool. And he was, he was ordering coffee and he was kept looking the other way and back. I was like, what is he? What he's looking at? Well, he was getting a, a parking ticket. Um, savage. Savage. And it was fascinating because I was like, oh, like, what? you know. And he was basically just waiting for the cops to leave. Because, you know, I was like, I don't even want it. Just, I don't want to create a scene. I'm just going to leave. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I was, that was kind of my end. I was like, oh, man, that sucks. Are you, it sucks. And I was like my end, like, making conversations. Like, just another guy. Hey, I'm just talking. <laughs> and so he's waiting. He's like, he, he get, ordered his coffee. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. And I was just like, David. Would it be cool if I get a quick pick? You didn't say Mr. Beckham? No. 
<laughs> I said David. And he was so cool. He was very, very gracious. And he's like, yeah, no problem, man. And then I did the thing that people always do to me. And I go, thanks, Matt. My, my sisters are going to be so excited. And I thought to myself, stop lying. What are you lying for, Nick? <laughs> it's like every time someone comes up to me and you're like, can I have a picture? It's like, oh, my grandma or my mom's such a big fan. I'm like, really? You know how many times I've taken pictures because someone's mom's a big fan or a grandma? And I'm like, so you're okay. F that's fine. But I I'm don't always, really like you, but my mom. But does. my mom does anyway. So I'm like, my sister's gonna be so excited, and I immediately like judge. I'm like, you know what, David? I'm, I'm actually a huge. Fan. <laughs> I correct myself because I, 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 I realized I did that, and I we took a couple picks, and then, uh, or just one pick, and then I was just you know trying to make conversation because a lot some people do that to me, kind of like. So what, uh, let's, let's be friends now. Like, you know, so I was like, so what brings you around here? And he kind of paused, like for the coffee, you know, like, I don't think he wanted to tell me why, you know, which is totally fine. I'm like, well, have a, have a great day. Thank you so much. And it took every bone in my body not to be like, so do you like want to hang out like now <laughs> or later? <laughs> like I, I had to like actively tell myself just to walk away, but, and yeah, he was very cool. And I actually, it was just like, I actually was like, hey, do you mind if I post this? Because like, I do have a small following. I didn't want it to, you know, he was very gracious. And he liked and commented on my post. Wow, you're in, you're in. So we're best friends. <laughs> Anyways, um, I fangirled over David Beckett. Rumor, I was just more like. He didn't fangirl. <laughs> no, no, but I was, I, I, I had no shame in saying like, you're an incredible dancer. And I've watched, all, like you were my, you were, she was my goal, like, that's who I wanted. I wanted to dance like not like I mean is the like I wanted to be that good. And she was she was she's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, she's even a better singer. But um, it's a work in progress. But I get back to we got a little off track. Anyways, you've been very focused. Uh, do you relate some of that to like being sober? Or have you always been this focused in your career, or do you think since you've decided to, um, you know. It wasn't you weren't your best self, and I think that's the best way to articulate that. Is yeah. it's not, you know, forget about whether you were an addict or you were an alcoholic. You knew that you weren't your best self, and you made a choice to. Do you think that's helped your career as well? Yeah, I think the main thing for me was realizing, and and I, yeah, and again to simplify it all, it was that I didn't like how I was feeling. I didn't like how I was presenting myself, and I think once that shifted and I started really getting in touch with who I wanted to be, that that's kind of what shifted it a bit. And, but I do think that part of that is also maturity because I think one of the hardest things that I've struggled with is, is drive. Really? When I was younger, especially because you're very driven now. Yeah, but it's something that I had to work for. And and I and I don't know if that's because of how I grew up or actually that's a lie. I think it's 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 about I think it's about um overcoming a fear of being too scared to try something because of fear of failure. Fair. Do you think I mean I think I having I've, the parents that you have and their successful careers played a role, or in like it was it having anything to do with living up to that, or that's just never bothered me as much. I think it's definitely more so about Internal. myself, yeah, and 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 kind of coming at it from a place of being a little bit self sabotaging, and and just not allowing myself to flourish because of fear that I won't be good enough or I won't succeed or be, you know, whatever. It I think be. a lot of people can relate to that. I mean, I think everyone to a certain degree uh, doesn't do things out of a fear of failure. Like I, I don't like karaoke because I don't like doing things I'm not good at because I, I mean, I, I don't like that I like that, but I like to be good at things. And so I work I really too, hard. Yeah. And so if I'm not good at it and I know I can't do well, I just sometimes won't do it. I wish I would get out of my head sometimes and do that. Uh, but I do think a lot of people can relate to the fear of failure. More, most people, I mean, even when you ask, when people don't ask someone out with that they're attracted to, it's the fear of failure. It's the fear of rejection. And I mean, that's the fear of failure is a really hard thing to overcome. Well, and I think also that's a way, I think that self-sabotaging mechanism is something that I've dealt with in a lot of arenas in my life because I feel like also 
and I'm sure a lot of women and maybe men can relate to this, is this like picking unavailable people because there's almost a way that then, oh, well, I can't really get hurt because they're never really going to be invested. Or there's like a built-in excuse. Yeah. And it's like, it's a way to keep people at arm's distance because if you know that they're not someone that you can really dive in or is really going to want to see you and be with you, I feel like there's this way of going, oh, well, they were just, you know, you can go to your girlfriends or- They weren't fixable. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, you know, they just, they, they couldn't be in a relationship and I just- not that I talk like this with my girlfriends, but <laughs> and he just couldn't do it. I've never heard you talk like this. Before. I don't, but I don't know why that's that's the, in my mind how I talk when I'm talking about so, guys. So you do this in your dating life? Do I self? Do you think I self sabotage in my dating? Absolutely. Life? Really? Yeah, hundred percent. Also, I've, I've this is not. Pro- I'm really. I don't know. I'm afraid I have her answer. Um, we might cut it out if I don't like it. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. I well, the people that you've gone after recently that we've talked about, I'm not going to blow up your spot and go into detail, but I think that maybe you're picking women who you know are not going to you're not going to be able to have like an adult relationship with who are mature <laughs> enough to, you know, deal with reach. What, what do you mean by adult rumor? <laughs> I just said I'm not gonna blow up your spy. We're always um, fine. Um, not, anyways. But by the no, way, I, what I've learned recently is that maturity has nothing to do with your age. It's a little bit both. It's a little bit of both. Um, yeah. I, one thing I want to ask about <laughs> a funny story. How do you when when people give? I'm curious about this. I think you'd be perfect because we had this story once about someone I went after, <laughs> and getting dating advice from friends. And sometimes getting, I'm also follow up to that is, uh, when is the right time to let your friend know if you don't like the person they're yeah. they're dating? But back to like getting dating advice from your friend. <laughs> I this was a while ago. I I was in to this person, and yeah. they kind of came on my radar, and I I, I reached out. He slid into slid the in, DM. Slid in the DM. That is a Nick Nick 101 dating. It is. No, it is. I just love how casually you use that phrase when we were hanging out a bunch. You were literally just talking. That was just a casual phrase that you use. Don't get me wrong. I've done it too. No shame. Everyone does it. It's like, I don't know why people still talk about it. Like it's some sort of like taboo thing. I know because it's just funny because it, because there's a difference. You can't just say, yeah, I, I messaged them or I reached out. You're like, I slid into their DMs. Anyways, I slid It sounds so much dirtier. And rumor approved of this person. I did, which is rare. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I reached out. I got a response. This person had recently got out of a relationship. And so I was thrilled about the response. And it was pretty quick. And this person was out of town for the summer. <laughs> Uh, and I was like, oh, okay, well, like they responded. I was like, well, when you're back in town, let's get together. And I'm thinking, great, I'll just, just leave it. Now. That is not true. That's, hold on. Let me preface this. This, <laughs> this, 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 this happened during a weekend where rumor was also courting a young man. And by young, I mean like someone older than her, but like a guy. A man. A man. And I don't go after young men. Whatever. She was, <laughs> court, they, you were dating this guy. Yeah. Um, and it was like kind of like more than slightly dating, but you hadn't defined the relationship. It was, right, this kind of... Yeah, Scout taught me this so when We hadn't DTR'd. You haven't DTR'd it. Or woo-wooed. Oh. Have you heard that one I yet? I haven't heard woo-wooed. Woo-woo I, is- I had to DTR last night. <laughs> woo-woo is yeah. what's up with us. Ooh. Isn't that good? That's good. I can't... I think Scout's boyfriend came up with that. Woo-woo. We got a woo-woo. Oh. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Can we... Yeah. Can, that's woo-woo. Anyways, so you hadn't <laughs> woo-wooed yet. Anyways, in this particular weekend, this guy who... Rumor was into, uh, was in town ish, right? He was like thirty miles away. Oh, he had yeah, been yeah, traveling, yeah. yeah. And and rumor was bummed because like he's close and he hadn't reached out. And it was like you know he's there. And she had it was case right? in point emotionally unavailable. Yeah, emotionally unavailable. And yeah. so rumor in this in this particular weekend we hung a lot this week, uh, that we had a great yeah. weekend as friends and and we were kind of there there for each other. But like you were bummed because this guy wasn't reaching out. So. In this weekend, and correct me if I'm wrong, all you wanted was this particular guy to like, hey, babe, I'm in the area. Let's, I don't know, let's get together or do something, right? And he or had not let done you that. you know. But yeah. by the way, I'm going to say this because I know where you're going with this. This had nothing to I do with the advice I that I gave I you. I don't agree. Our, our oh. friend Jenny, uh, 
Well, she disagrees with your <laughs> Anyways, you people, people. Uh, there uh, were four. Uh, let me just preface this. There also. were four. There other were women. four other women there, and I think they're all in the same boat. That were all saying the exact same thing as me. So it's not like I was saying, "Yeah, right back, right back." I think back. you were all wrong, what? and maybe our listeners at home can weigh in. Anyway, so I reach out to this girl. <laughs> I reach out to this girl. Hey, what's up? Blah blah blah. Casual. And then she's like, yeah, I'm out, I'm out of town for the summer. And I'm like, well, when you're back in town, let's get together. And uh, so. And then great. you brought up. Oh, great setup. And then I send that that was, a, I, I could have, the option at that point is just to leave it. So then at that point, I send her a message and I say, well, if you ever want to like, you know, text, you know, here's my number. Yeah. And my thought thinking. There's nothing sometimes more fun than a long distance kind of texting, FaceTime relationship. Absolutely. It co- happens over time and maybe you get to know someone. And it's kind of this fun. You can't see them. And so I'm thinking like, that would be fun with this person. You know, so I throw that out there and she like heart messages it or something. I don't know. That's weak, by the way. I just want to say. The heart message? This happened to me recently. I heard a lot of, a lot of women do not like the double tap heart message. I don't mind it if it's followed up. I know we have a story, but this happened to me recently and I was very upset about it because I think it's weak. Why? Well, especially if you're like sending a flirty text or like maybe a cute photo. it's so easy? But then no response after. Mm, I think it's fine to do. I do. I get a lot of complaints about that. I get the don't heart message me. Well, Unless you're going to follow it up. It's very comfortable with yeah. people. Like, yes, because it's sometimes it's like, it's just double tapping. Yes. I, like I I'll it. do it with my friends, my sisters. I would do that with you. But I think that if you're. It leaves, well, it leaves a little bit open. They like, it's an, is it an acknowledgement or do you agree? It's like, that's the question I think people have. Like, well, are you just acknowledging just, my message? Or are you saying yes? Or, it's the least amount of effort yes. you can possibly make. The, like from where we've gotten back in the day where we were writing love notes sure. and well, calling people all the time and now it's two or text messages, the least you can okay, do. Okay, fair enough. So <laughs> this person gives us the least amount of effort to my response of, here's my number, shoot me a text if you want, right? I tell Rumor this story. She's like, oh, this is great. I approve of this person. I like this combination. We'll yeah. see where it goes. And I'm like, great. So we're hanging out. Meanwhile, Rumor is now wishing Mr. X would reach out. Mr. And X. Whatever, I don't know. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> and <laughs> Mr. X. And so Ruben and I are like hanging out and I'm being honest. I'm like, I really wish this person would text me. You know, like I'm I'm in I'm excited about this person. My friend approves. I'm like, this is great, you know? Like Didn't you have another thing that you wanted to write her though? I don't know. What, what I, I think I, you did. No, here's what I said to Rumor. Here's what I said to Rumor. You I was did. like, I go, I would love, I I just said I wish she would, like, I kind of would love this. And so Rumor's advice was, you know what? Women love, like, guys who go after what they want. So, like, you know what? Send her this message. And then we started crowdsourcing. And so I'm, like, sending her messages. And she was responding, right? But, like, she's out of town. And I don't know exactly what I sent her. But keep my point was, here I am. And she had never texted you at this point? No, she has been responding, right? But she hadn't used the number. Hadn't she hadn't used, used the number. number. She has, she's not using the number. And so like, I, it was that it was clear in the messages that I'm making overtures and she was like responding, but not really diving in or like, you know what I'm saying? Like not asking a lot of follow-up questions. She did it first, you know, but after like, here's my number, it was kind of just responding. But my point is I'm getting advice from someone who this weekend, all she wanted was a guy to make the, take the initiative. And so I was getting the advice from a friend who just wanted a guy to reach out. And I'm here saying, I just want to reach out to this girl. And rumors like, you should definitely do this. Yeah, because by the way, irregardless of her response, you're showing her, you're showing up. Mm-hmm. So I think. No, I agree. You're, you're, I think either she could have, because by the way, she could have responded out. either way. It really could have gone either way. Eventually she went dark. I don't think you would have gone out anyways. Like, I don't think that ruined it, just to be honest. I Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If she hadn't texted I, you. I, I don't think that she would have gone out with you either. Yeah, so Ever. it's not rumors. And fault. it's only because I okay. met someone who knows her, and then I know a little bit more about her now. I don't think it would have happened. Yeah, you dodged a bullet. Yeah. The universe is always working for you that way. <laughs> I, I want to know Trust more. Trust and believe. I want, I want to know more offline. Okay. 
Uh oh. She just. Have you been dating anyone recently? Sure. You said you DTR last night. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. I. I, I love this game. I. Uh, <laughs> I had been hanging out with this person for a while, and how long is a while? A few months, off and on. But we like it was we we had DTR'd it a few times, and the DTR was like, how do you DTR it a few times? <laughs> Well, early on, I, 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 this person is a bit younger than me. <laughs> Whatever, like, young enough to like, I, I've said, I really want to be a dad, right? I know this, I want to, and I want to be in a relationship, and I'm getting to the point in my life, I want to be a father, and so like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to rush into a relationship just to have a kid. So don't you find it counterintuitive yeah, of to course, date of, young women? Yes, I, yes. <laughs> Um, but I'm just, I'm asking this because I don't necessarily, but I hang, I've hung out with. And so if I meet someone and like, you seem cool and then like, oh, you're how old? And it's like, oh, okay. And then like, well, I'm, you're, you're fun. Like, it's cool. And then the thought of like, well, do you want to like pursue something? And I'm thinking like, I want to be in a relationship where it, it's at least on the table that if like, I'm, I meet you and you know, like if we were like courting and all of a sudden, like, I know that you want to have kids. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, you meet someone. Oh, you want to have kids. You, I want to have kids. Let's have a kid right now. It's like, well, let's see where this goes. But we both know that like, if it goes the direction we think it could, or we hope that it's on the table, that there's never going to be discussion. Well, okay, just, you know, I'm just not, I'm not ready to have kids. There's like, I'm, there's yeah. things I want to do. And, and so that was kind of my emphasis of like, I mean, you're actually really great. And like, but like, I just, I know that I want this, this and I know that I know that if we were to like say, let's give this a go and like really commit to this relationship, I want to know that it's an option and it's on the table. And I think it would be unfair to me to expect that. And I don't think you're in a position to even say whether you do or don't. And it, I, I, you've said that you're not, and I totally get that, that like even in a year and a half, it's reasonable. Well, that's what's crazy that I found about dating recently since I turned 30. And I know everyone's going to say, you're 30, you're so young, whatever. I want to be a mom. And, and I think it's really different. And I found it really interesting that nowadays when I... I'm interested in someone that I, you have to have those kind of conversations kind of early on if it's someone that you feel like you could potentially be serious about in the long run. And, but it's weird. And so I, I've been trying to navigate that as well, trying to figure out, we just started hanging out, but I feel like I don't want to waste time with someone that that's not even an option for them. So how do you, how would, as a man, like how would you be the most comfortable to bring up that conversation or for a girl to bring up that conversation About and kids. say, yeah, and say, hey, look, I I know that we just started seeing each other, but this is, and and this is probably too early to have this conversation, but I just want you to know where I'm at. So that's a great question too, because I weirdly feel very comfortable saying this. And I don't know if it's because as a guy, I just assume women have a maternal more women than men have a maternal instinct. Not uh, not all, but like you, you, I hear a lot of my women friends talk about that. And I don't hear it as from this guy yeah. as much. And so because I do, I feel comfortable bringing it up. Like I'm not a, I, do you, as a woman, do you feel like you're more worried that the guy's going to have an adverse response to like, I'm not ready to have kids or? A little bit. I think, I think that, well, mostly because a lot of the people that I've met or talked to recently, even just guy friends have been like, even girlfriends I have, when I talk about wanting to be a mom, they just are like, oh my God, no way, not for a while. So I guess my question is why don't, I mean, I guess fear of failure, right? The same concept. Exactly. It's the same thing. I, I don't want to tell you because, or I'm, or I'm going, oh, maybe this will make you not want to hang out with Isn't me that funny that we is. do that so much though? We're always afraid to find out the answer. I get a lot of questions of Nick of like, well, how should I say this or what should I do? You should just say it. You should just literally be honest because and if they're not going to like your answer, it, yeah. then bye. Because also trust your gut because your gut's probably telling you they aren't ready or they don't want and it. That's and you're, why you're afraid, afraid of their answer and so you don't ask their question. Exactly. And you keep pretending you just- Or you talk around it. You talk it. around it. Yeah. But if you really want to have kids and a guy doesn't want to have kids, then he's- And it's counterintuitive yeah. because if the end goal really is- that yeah, you want to find someone to have kids with, and you're just delaying the inevitable, and and also taking up space for a person that who might want that with you to come in. Because oh, I, I actually it's have tough a, though too. Yeah. I have an interesting analogy or metaphor for this that I was thinking about about fear that I'm curious if you have the same thing for. I feel like 
in the past, I've sometimes stayed in relationships longer than I needed to out of this, A, fear of either, it's like you're comfortable. And I have a couple of friends who are dealing with this right now too. You you get comfortable, the idea of then not having someone, even if you know that they're not right for you, becomes you don't want to shut that door completely. And so I was thinking about it the other day and it's like, we talked about this when you go to the movies and you eat too much candy. Or for me, I was thinking about it, like you have this cake in your house, right? And it's a decent cake. It's not your favorite cake, but because you want sweets, you're going to eat it. And then you realize that you don't need this cake anymore and that it's not good for you. And so you throw it in the garbage. Mind you, there's nothing else in the garbage, so it's not gross. And so in your mind, you're like, well, I can still have it. If I really want it, I can still have it. Have you ever done that? No, I've not. Um, But, you know, it makes me think of that. And you go, I can still have it, even though I've kind of thrown it away and put it away. But the truth is you can take it out just as easily if it's just in the garbage. Yeah, we do it all the time. Yeah, we do it all the time. But until you really put, you know, ketchup and throw other stuff in there, you're not really done. And I feel like I can get myself to that point where I throw it away. But then it's like that last moment of going, oh, do I really want to shut the door on this? Well, it's called boredom too because this person I DTR'd with or woo-wooed with. Sorry, we're going to go with woo-woo. Either one. I accept either one. I like woo-woo because it's different. You should make shirts. Yeah. 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 We're trying – we're going to get – yeah, we're 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 coming up with phrases, and so then we're gonna have like swag. It's a whole thing. I like working it. On. <laughs> Rumor. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, because it's called boredom. Because I'm certain, I am certain, this person I wooed with, we will hang out again. Yeah, because but- we both enjoy each other's company. And in, unless I meet someone or she does, like yeah, but I feel like that then, like someone will reach out to someone and we'll like run into each other and like we'll hang out and then we'll get in this rhythm and we'll have to DTR again. Yeah, but you know, that, right? Listen, people, we, listen. That, though, this is that, this that's is, what you're talking about, though, right? Kind of, but this is also a different kind of woo woo. This is more like spiritual woo woo that I've been thinking about, and someone told me the other day. You're giving the universe, and this is only if you subscribe to this kind of thought. So if you don't, it's fine. That. You're giving the universe mixed messages. So if we're both saying we both want to have kids, right? But Mm -hmm. then we continue either staying with someone who we know doesn't want that just because out of boredom or because of out of comfortability, then we're saying, oh, this is something I want, but this is what I'm staying in. True. So You're not manifesting your reality. Yeah, Yeah. you're not putting – like you're taking up so much energy on something that's not going to be – in effort of what you want. I totally buy that. I mean, I'm not like an overly spiritual person, but I absolutely believe in manifesting the world or curating the world that you want to create. And if you are doing things counterintuitive, and I I know I'm a hypocrite with some of the things I, we all do this. Absolutely. We all do it. But like the more you can, uh, your actions reflect the things that you say you want and you're putting yourself in positions to do those things, you will... it will make your it, things will happen. It's inevitable. And when I do a good job of that, things are ha- things yeah. happen. Um, it's sometimes just hard to do because in between all that is the fear of being alone, the fear of failure, the fear of, like or boredom seeps in, and it's just a it's a motherfucker. Well, yeah, and it's not fun to go from hanging out with someone all the time and you have a new thing that's exciting and fun to just going back to being single again. But the truth is, is I don't want to spend energy and expend time with someone that A, doesn't want the same things as me and B, can't communicate about it. I think communication is so huge. Very much so. In anything. I know this is an annoying question, but how do you guys feel about the rumors that everyone's always talking about you guys dating? That we're dating? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's... I'm... It's, it was funny when that was, rumor posted a picture. It was actually that weekend. Yeah, that we were hanging out. Nick and was like, "I have to write friend on this picture so that people know that here's, we're friends." No, and here, I was like, oh. "No, well, yes." <laughs> rumor, rumor rolls her eyes at me. And li- listen, here's the thing: is that when it comes to whatever n- the notoriety I have in public, you know, talking about like I kissed a guy more than anything and like I do a I do a, a TV show I'm on Dance with Star I mean The Bachelor or whatever I, you know any news any interview I do more than anything else I'm most known for my dating life and the, yeah. the curiosity that people have mostly about me is who I'm dating or who I'm not so I'm just aware of that and so yeah and when you know rumor posts this picture and it was like a cute photo of us or whatever and what and yeah there's the yeah. photo 
here we are. And I'm like, you got to put something about friends. And remember, like, kind of rumor rolls her eyes at me. I'm and like, then that's she, so dumb. She posts it. And then, like, 10 minutes later, you message me, kind of like, oh, I get it. You absolutely did. And you changed something because it was like you weren't even expecting it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, also, I'm like, who cares? Totally. Who the fuck cares? I, I don't really care. And listen, I, someone thinking that we're dating is the least of my concerns. It's just more, <laughs> it's just more, um, I don't like, yeah. I'm I was just, taking personal offense. I was like, yes, oh God, yeah. God forbid you're dating me, Nick. Yeah. Oh no. my God. <laughs> no, you look great. I, I, I had no, <laughs> no, I knew that you, you would, but I just like, I don't like having to set the record straight all the time about my dating life. Yeah, but who cares? I, Anyways, you you had a response to it. You 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 I were know. like you Only definitely were like oh shit! I didn't realize that when it comes to the people who pay attention to me, very much care about if I'm dating someone. Well, they're just vicious. I will do like an interview, like I'm like about natural habits or like they're like, are you dating? They're your like, oh yeah, we'll oil? ask your questions. Blah blah blah. By the way, are I you dating, dating anyone? This. No, seriously. Like it's- but by the way, that's happened to me. Like anytime I get photographed standing next to a man, I'm immediately dating them. I've I've been linked to like six people that I've never dated. Yeah, that no, are my I, friends. I'm but- fine with it, but I'm just I'm 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 and I probably am a little too. Um, Hypersensitive? Not sensitive <laughs> is not the word, but I'm just uh, cautious of it. I'm just, and sometimes it is like, I'm just more like, hey, just so you know, like, I don't think people think about it if they're gonna like, yeah. it's more like, do you, I don't know, like I'm sensitive to, you definitely had a reaction of surprise of how many people commented on it. Yeah. I was like, what were you, what did you think was gonna happen? Because, I, because, because also. And I'm fine with it. If but, I'm gonna post, if I'm gonna post, something like this, if it's actually going to be someone I'm dating, I'm probably not going to post it Yeah, until but, it's a thing. But people don't, you, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm the same way, but especially people in, in bachelor world, they're like, Hey, guess what? I'm dating. So, like as soon as they can. Yeah. But I didn't, um, I would have said something been like, I, this fine. is my love. I know that my life, my inspiration. I, I, I mean, get that. She's grown up in the public eye. I think she knows. Right, she's used to it. I get that, but even rumor it admitted to in just like like the bachelor world is a little bit different. It, it, it's it's so focused on who you're dating. Well, I was less. That's all. I, I was, mean, I had less of a reaction to this than when you told me when we were first hanging out, and people knew way before we ever posted a picture or were seen together that you were like, oh yeah, because I did a story at this place and yeah. they watched that you were at the same place that they know we're hanging out. And I was like, wow, yeah, that's there intense. were people like DMing us or like, are you hanging out with Rumor Willis? And like, like cryptically. And that's, a, and I was just like, this happens. Like I have people like watching who I follow and and see, like, I just want to hire those people to start investigating people that I want to date. Yeah. I'm like, can you do this for me? But they, yeah, there's a probably a, a market out there. <laughs> like, um, I did want to get your opinion. I, I recently I get a lot of questions about I'm dating my my friend is dating this guy, he's terrible. I I recently was hanging out with this 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 friend who told me this story about someone they dated mm-hmm. and. They weren't like, they weren't talking bad, but they were being honest about this person they were dating that was sound, it sounded to me like they were kind of defending him, but this person sounded like a nightmare. Yeah. A true, true nightmare, like a manipulative guy who like the, the, the classic guy who over loves and, and uh, infuses like his love for you and I'm obsessed. But in between that is like yeah. shady and does, you know, like that guy who is like Oof. over promises and then like, I love you so much, but then all of a sudden like disappears sometimes, but like, it's whatever, a lot of that. I yeah. feel like the people listening, we all, all met this guy. Everyone has. This guy is also beautiful. He's handsome. Well, I feel like those two kind of go sometimes hand in they, hand. And so <laughs> this, this person's telling me this story and I'm just like, Jesus, right? And now this person went from one relationship to another and is now like in a, an engagement with another person. And... I know who they're engaged to. I don't know. I mean, I know, like I, you know, I, I ran into them, whatever. And, and there was this thought of like, like, what's the right thing to do? Like in that situation, because when I always, when I get asked questions about, 
um, should I tell my friend? It's it's never it's it's a hard position to be in if you don't like your friend's boyfriend or girlfriend because they're never going to believe you and you're yeah. risking their friendship. And it's but it's tough because again, tough. that should be your number one red flag. By the way, if you're if the people that you love and trust most in your life don't like this person. I feel like a lot of people don't believe them, right? I, they don't. or Well, but it's also, I think, about being in denial, like what you were saying about trusting your gut. I have dated so many people where inherently I knew- Your gut doesn't lie. I knew that it was not right, but because I wanted, there was something about it that I liked, I kept myself in denial. I literally, I would never do this, but like to that point, I was, we were talking, I saw this person, I literally thought to myself, what if in this situation you walk up to this person at the bar and you walk up to him and say, hey, listen, you don't know me, but I know the person you're with and you're going to hate me for saying this and I want to apologize in advance, but I know they're really bad news. Mm -hmm. And all I ask for you, and even though you're shocked, is to, what does your gut tell you? Think about what, you're, what, think about what I'm saying. And if any part of what your gut telling you, what I'm saying, your gut like oh, hears it. You can't do it as a stranger. I, what, I wonder if you know, what a stranger. You can't do it as a stranger. I, I would never do that. But what I'm, I always get curious, like, what if you, what if, is that the, it's not the right thing to do, but what if you did that? What if, if you knew, if you knew someone was bad news and then you knew they were with someone you didn't know? I would talk to their friend. I would, would, I would, you would have to go But up then to it's their another friend. person you're like, it's third party. Yeah, but. So, okay, I have a story. I have a perfect story. And I don't think either party will worry about me saying this. Um, I had a boyfriend and my sisters did not like him at all. And and I feel fine telling the story because he and I are actually great friends now. And, okay. and we laugh about this. So we had a very up and down kind of tumultuous relationship. It was a lot of fun. I have a lot of love for him still, but my sisters just did not like him at all. And so we were going to, uh, we were driving him to Palm Springs for Valentine's Day. And I pick up the phone in the car and it's my sister. And she goes, and she was like, hey, Rue, happy Valentine's Day. Have you broken up with him yet? Out of nowhere? You didn't know she didn't like him at the oh, point? Oh, no, I knew that she didn't you like didn't. him. You didn't, okay. I absolutely know. And she was, like, she was like, have you broken up with him yet? And I said, hey, Scout, you're on speaker. Say hi to blah, blah, blah. And she goes, hi, Scout. And she goes, hi, blah. And then just hangs <laughs> up. And it was so good. I was horrified. And I was just like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Were um, you thinking about breaking up with him at this point? Uh, I don't know. We broke up and kind of got back together sure, multiple sure. times. But, you know, I, I, think, I think it's really important to – and it's, it's tough saying this, but I don't know. I had this the other day. I was dating someone of like last year maybe. And I told my friend and my guy friend and he goes, oh, yeah. And then I told him a few months later that I broke up with him. And he goes, oh, yeah, he was garbage. I didn't want to say anything. And that, I said, why wouldn't you tell me? That happened to me with my parents in my first engagement after I got cheated on. You know, my parents, I always, I love them because they were, they, they, they were amazing parents and they were very strict growing up. Yeah. But and part of it is because I had the younger siblings. And once I got it as an adulthood, they like let me be an adult. And so I'm dating her. And then we break up and they find out she cheats on me and get engaged. And after that, they're like, you know, they just kind of like mention other things that like kind of they observed they didn't really like. You know, she did this and it always seemed a little weird and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this is really good information I would have appreciated. Well, we didn't, yeah. we knew you really liked her and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no way. Tell me. It's tough though. I also do wonder when my parents say that though. And in fairness to my parents, had they told me in the moment, how would I have I reacted? Because after the relationship ends, right? And I'm hurt and that person has wronged me and I want to find reasons to hate them and I want to find reasons you to can be pick mad. Stuff apart. It's easy to be like, well, then why didn't you tell me? I totally would have listened to you and I would have been blah, blah, blah. But I honestly, when I really think back, would I have? Would I have been mad at my parents? Would I have made excuses for them and say, well, you just, you like you liked my my other girlfriend and you're, you know, like, I think that happens a lot too. You're not giving yeah. her a chance I mean, I or you don't understand her. I think that there's um, a way to do it in a loving manner that's 
not about telling someone what to do. And I think there's a big difference because I've been with girlfriends where I go, you should do this, fuck him, you should break up with him, whatever. And I think instead coming at it from a point of not giving advice and just saying, hey, I just heard this stuff. You can do whatever you want. It's your life. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I just want you to be aware of this information so that you can make the best choice for you. And I think if you come at it that way as opposed to, oh, yeah, sweet sisters. I look like, I, like I'm terrified in that photo. <laughs> you look <laughs> like, like a deer in the headlights terrified. A little Winona Ryder in that? Yeah, you're like. I look so you're scared. really concerned. <laughs> like really terrified of the photographer. It's a blue steel modeling look. That's. <laughs> uh, my Great. sweet sisters, I love them. Um, but you know what I mean. I get what you're saying. Yeah, I think that it's kind of like drop. Well, you know, you want. I, again, I wouldn't that scenario at the bar, but it's kind of like that. Hey, I'm just, and that's why I wonder if sometimes if it's from a stranger. No way. I because it's like I'm just letting you know <laughs> that here's a situation, and it's more like if you want to think I'm crazy, it's fine. But it's more, it's that whole like gut feeling. Yeah, but then. The, the person because I, I think you always know deep down. If I think like, the problem is then the person is going to go. This guy just told me this crazy stuff, and it will less be less concentrated on what you actually said and more on that some weirdo guess, stranger just I was would talking never shit about do your, that. But I wonder if. But in this situation, here's this person is over the moon with this person who might be a nightmare, and there's a good chance this guy will mask it long enough. And li- like the person who told me the story, I'm thinking. The, my only takeaway this whole thing is thank God it ended before you were going to get engaged because they were like yeah. it, it abruptly ended right before like they were picking out rings whatever and then a month later he's engaged to someone else kind of crazy shit like that right and I'm only thinking thank God like my only takeaway of hearing your story is you wow you lucked out now yeah, the new but- person might not be so lucky they might like follow through, get married, even have a kid, and then the nightmare comes out. Because these people, the manipulation, the but narcissist. I, I, just, I still think it can't be a stranger. I realize- I'm not saying it's no, going I to know, be a stranger. But someone actually did this to me the other day. I was talking about someone that I was kind of interested in, mm-hmm. that I had a crush on. And they said, look, I don't want to burst your bubble, but because you're my friend and I love you, I just want you to be aware that I know some information about this person, that they did this, this, and this, and that's not okay. But again, I, I, I really think it's about removing- any personal desire and any um, stake you have in the game. And you have to tell the information in a way that's not giving advice and just allow that person to do whatever they're going to do. I, I, I think I, I totally agree. I mean, I kind of did it on Paradise with Amanda, with, with, with Josh, and thinking back. And to Ashley I, didn't you? Different though. <laughs> I told Ashley I like you know, that was dope. I mean, I love Jared. I think Jared was great. They were both friends. With on Paradise, it was Amanda was asking me about Josh. And I didn't have a good opinion of Josh at the time. And my answer to her at was- the time. And, at all. And so, you know, granted, like a man and I went on a date. We weren't, we weren't really like vibing each other. I mean, I was waiting for Jen, but either way, there yeah. was like this potential thought of like, I'm only saying this because I'm biased that you, like everyone's thinking you picked Josh over me. And so yeah. I don't want to come. So I said, listen, she asked me, here's my opinion, but like you have to form your own. But I'm telling you this. So like, ask the right questions and pay attention to the answers. I think that is important too. If you're going to let someone know, because I I will say you're saying that, and I'm really sometimes self-conscious about like my reputation too. Like, you know, especially in Bachelor Nation of being the villain, like I get really insecure about like, are there like some bullshit stories out? You know, like you're talking about like, not that I care about like the kissing a guy, but like, you know, in the, in the media or, yeah. You know, so I always want someone to give me, I know who I am and, and my genuine intentions. If you get warned by someone and your gut's telling you something that they might be right, you should, you, you, you should got to ask questions yeah. and you should, so when people give you answers, you should really listen to their answers. Yeah. And if they sound like, if they sound reasonable, but you always, again, you know when it's an excuse. Well, but also, and I want to talk about this because I'm curious to know what you think about in terms of communication in a relationship. Say- I'm dating someone and it's, I don't know, we've been together three to six months, right? And you came up to me and you said, Rue, I heard some stuff about this guy that you're seeing. For me, at least the goal and what I'm trying to work towards, I haven't gotten there yet because I'm still working on my own stuff. I would like to be in a relationship and be confident enough in the value of myself to go to the person I'm dating and say, 
hey, I heard some stuff yeah. about, and I, I don't want to be blaming, but this came up. Can you tell me your perspective sure. or can you kind of give me your side of the story as to what happened? And I think in so many relationships, the lack of communication and honesty and just allowing yourself to be vulnerable with what you want, with what works for you and your boundaries can be so... Totally. Like, I also think if you do get asked this question, it's imp like a, a red flag for me if I'm addressing something with someone is someone who immediately gets defensive. Exactly. And snaps back and then immediately snaps at like the who the room like the who the rumor's coming from. Yeah. Because like if you if there is a rumor out there about you, it's coming from somewhere. For it might sure. be completely off base. There might be so many layers of things that are out of context. But like you should then be able to explain it without like, listen, I don't know where this is coming from or why that person thought that, I, you know, but let me just explain it to you. It's fine. Yeah. That response is very calming. Someone's like, well, that's. That I never did that. That's I never bullshit. did that. That's bullshit. Like they don't even know like that. That person's fuck. If I hear that, I immediately I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's what's up? Why is that a trigger? Yeah. And so I think, you know, that. I uh, if you if you have if you're not defensive because it, the, sometimes the mistake people make is that fear of like uh, being found out about being found out even if it's not true like some people I don't know if that's always the case I think some people do get defensive but I think if you do get very defensive very quickly and even if the rumors are false you look guilty but by the way even if you've done something bad say say yeah you know it's a learning yeah but I say I was dating someone and you found out that they had a girlfriend that they cheated on. If I'm dating you, I would so much rather you came yeah. and if I said, hey, this is what I heard, and you said, yeah, you know what? I was in a situation and I cheated on her. I'm really and, ashamed. Yeah, and, I, I, and I'm and i bummed that I did that, but- I wish I, I would have told you. I, I didn't know if we were, I was at the place to tell exactly. you yet, and that's why. I, I wish I could have told you. Maybe I should have told you sooner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. I would so much prefer that than, than some sort of- because I, I'm willing to, I'm I'm not coming from a place of judgment. I would so much, I'm going to be more judgmental if you lie to me about it. And if you kind of come from this defensive place, than if you just say, yeah, you know, I'm a human being in my 20s or whatever it was, or I made bad decisions. Because we all have. Oh, totally. I have found that when it comes to my dating life, I feel way more comfortable around people who early on uh, – admit mistakes and and like talk about like shit they've done or whatever Absolutely. and just kind of owning it and talk about it as a way of, of growth i get really nervous around the people who um are very judgmental and are so perfect and, like, and yeah, come across as like well i would i would never do that or and they're just very critical of everyone else because either yeah. a they haven't experienced life or b they've done it all they've done it all and they're so like on kind of keeping this image of who they are yep. because no one really is and it's just like that that person makes me uncomfortable because then it's just like and i'm not talking about anything like real well, no of course but just everyone has their shit you know everyone's been selfish and everyone's made mistakes yeah. everyone's lied at some point everyone's not been their best self everyone's been a bad boyfriend or girlfriend at yeah. some point to someone and if you haven't that makes me really nervous that if you can't ever say well i've never i dated this person and i wasn't like i was a shitty boyfriend at one point and then you say well, and because then, there's a lack you know what it is it's because you realize there's a lack of unawareness of or of, there's a lack of self-awareness and a lack of of self-reflection. And I think because that's something that I'm working on so hard right now in my life about just taking responsibility for myself, for my actions, for my feelings. And that when I see someone that isn't up to that same level as me, I'm trying not, I don't judge it that you're not there, but I do want to find someone to be with that is interested in self-awareness, self-reflection, vulnerability, willing to admit their mistakes, being okay with, you know, setting up boundaries with each other and yeah. having that not be, you know, bad. How do you do, how, now how do you go about doing that? Because we both kind of admit maybe that we're not good at the pre-selection process. Nope. We're really good at talking about. Yeah. You're like, hey, you know, listen, if I were outside of my body, I would. I'd, <laughs> I could do it. I'd give myself great advice, but. <laughs> I think, I think for me, the biggest thing in moving forward is being really honest about where I'm at and coming in. And I, I did this a little bit with the last person I was seeing where I, I really tried to be vulnerable 
and honest and not be afraid to express myself. And they just weren't willing to or were not able to kind of do the same, which is totally fine. But I think, yeah, coming at it and saying, hey, this is, I know that this is early to have this conversation, but um, I'm really interested in being a mom and and that's something that I really want. And these are, this is kind of what I'm looking for. And then instead of also letting something fester, so if we had something and I didn't like something that you said, instead of waiting a week to talk to you about it, yeah, in a very non-reactive way, immediately just saying, you know what, when you said that, this that kind of brought up this thing in me and made me feel not good. And and I know that it actually probably has nothing to do with you or what you said and my own stuff and my own thing that I'm making up in my mind, but I just wanted you to know or whatever so that you're not holding this resentment towards someone and letting it kind of fester and become this thing. Totally. I mean, I... I People do it all the time, like, how what, how should I bring it up or whatever. I do appreciate when I had the, the woo-woo, the relationship last night. Uh, that person was like, hey, can we talk? Yeah. And it was like, I knew it was coming. And I really appreciated this person's, like, maturity about, like, just being very, like, hey, listen. Like, I know how you feel, but, like, I'm just getting to a point where, like, why should we? And I'm like, Okay. Yeah, nothing's changed on my end. Just so I don't, I'm not going to lie to you, or yeah. you know, and I'd still honestly like to keep hanging out with you. But you're probably, but like it was a very. She knew what she wanted, and she stuck to her guns. I really respected that. It would have been very easy for me, like God damn it, she's, you know. But I, it, it doesn't change the fact that I'm at one point in my life and yeah, she's at another. Absolutely, and, uh, and that matters. Um, I, so I many totally people are afraid so. to bring it up. You know, for the reasons we talked about, afraid of the answer. Oh, and that's funny. I when we had Tasha on, and I kind of said, like, you don't don't go on a first date and feel like you have to dump all your shit. Absolutely. But it's never too early if in your gut there's something you want to talk about. Yeah. And if for some reason you want to talk about it, then fine. But I don't think you people should do it as a consideration for the other person. Well, there's if you a, need to, there's a difference between like between over like oversharing or trauma bonding or yeah. talking about all the horrible things that trauma bonding. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. And <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> like, oh my god, yes. yes. Yeah, I do think that there's a line and also what I've realized is in our culture or maybe just this generation we're, we've rushed so into let's just be in a relationship let's just be together as opposed to you know what I would like to take three months maybe say or maybe not three months and you can still do physical things whatever yeah. to re or take a month I don't know whatever to really decide if I actually want to be with you I think people do I, I think people are doing it all wrong and I'm part of this problem Me too. is that either people are rushing into it or they're just dragging, dragging it, out. it out there's no like there's no like I'm sending this. I like you. I don't. I'm not saying yeah. anything more than that. But let's let's give it a shot. Yeah. With no expectations. Let's let's take it slow. But what they do is either they go gung ho and like let's talk about marriage, or they're like, uh, I don't want. Let's. I'm not. Yeah. Like I have. Listen, I have a crush. I have. We a don't crush need to talk this. about it. Let's just hang out. Like and then it gets very confusing. Yeah. You don't know where this person stands. And yeah. I have a I have a new crush, and I feel like. I want to have a conversation with him and be like, listen, I'm really attracted to you, but I don't necessarily want to start anything. I would like to maybe just take some time and hang out with you and get to know you as a friend and see if there's anything there. Why don't you say that? Well, I, I think I might. You should. I think that would work on every guy. You know, and be like, listen, I don't want to rush into a relationship or start dating, but I would really just like to get to know you as a friend and see if I even like you that way because I think I was I have an amazing story actually of a perfect example of amazing direct communication I went on a date with a guy and it was amazing and had so much fun great conversation I wrote him a couple days later seeing if he wanted to go to dinner um because I'm forward like that and I don't why do we have to call that forward well be, I don't know this is, that's another, another story I think it's great so he writes me and he says hey you know what I'm actually um I would love to go to dinner. I just want to be forward or upfront and let you know that I am not in a place to have a relationship and right now. 
but I think you're incredible and I loved our conversations and I would really like to be friends with you. And at first I was like, oh man, this sucks. But then I realized how grateful I was because then I'm not sitting there wondering every time we hang out, is this going to be a thing? Yeah. Is this not? what? It, and that kind of honest communication, now we have an incredible friendship and he's one of my closest yeah, friends. There's an ego thing that first hurts. Yeah. And then but there's a freedom in knowing. Yeah, but someone to say, be so direct about it. And because also I feel like sometimes I've done this in the past and I'm sure you have too, where you hear someone say, yeah, I'm, I'm not interested in having a relationship. And instead of hearing them and respecting that, you take it as a challenge. Oh my God. And you're like, oh uh, yeah, I'm I, like, I got this. Really? Well, challenge accepted. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's do this. Game right. of Thrones style. I'm ready. No, 100%. <laughs> and that's literally my- Bring me my dragons. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I you want to see my dragons? I love when you're like, you've probably done this like since I was 16. Well, I know, but I don't want to speak for anyone. I just feel uh, like- Yes. You know, I think we all, like anyone who likes it, uh, yes, it's a challenge. It's, it's- uh, for sure. Um, I will just say, before we get to uh, questions with fans, I have never had a woman uh, be direct with her feelings, even if I didn't necessarily feel the same way. And she did it in a way that was very, like, matter of fact, just like, this is what I want. Exactly. And I'm not, like, being crazy. Yeah. It was just very kind of, like, pragmatic and never not found that very attractive. And yeah. even if I wasn't, like, I didn't think I necessarily wanted to date her, I was, like, it made me at least give me a moment of pause. I'm, like, maybe I do because that was really sexy. This, like, idea of, of – and, again, it's not – you know, Risha, we talked about like when you asked the question, like, well, do you like, you know, like, just not do you this, care about me at do you, all? Do you care about me? No, it's like, hey, buddy, I just want you to know how I feel. Yes. And I'm just stating my, you know, my speaking my truth. And yeah. like, you have your own decision to make, but I am confident and comfortable letting you know how I feel, knowing that you might not feel the same way. But I'm also letting you know what I want. And if you don't, then I'm prepared and willing to walk away. Well, see, that's that's the crux of it right You there. have to be able to and walk I, away. Exactly. And I think that's where so much fear comes from. And I can definitely say I have fear of that myself or have in the past up until this point that has kept me in things or kept me from speaking my truth because I was so afraid of being rejected or abandoned for asking for what I wanted mm, and, and for asking to be valued yeah. with what I felt like I deserved. And because and because of that, I ended up in relationships where I was not treated as well as I should. And I felt resentful of that person because totally. my needs weren't being met, but because I wasn't asking for what I wanted. And, and in the same way that that girl did, coming at it from a place of just saying, it shows a level of confidence oh, and a value so for sexy. yourself. So exactly, hot. that's so sexy because I, you're not, to be able to walk away from someone I think is such a huge strength because it shows that you're. You they deserve you. Yeah. They demand your respect, and yeah. I think that's just really. It's, and to be valued, yeah, and to value their time. I will say, since doing questions with Nick in this podcast, my most surprising takeaway has been, and I see it more with women, than that women seem to me more fixated on does he like me more than do I, I like, like him. I like him, absolutely. And it blows my mind. And I think more women and guys you know, should really focus on if they like a guy, great. I mean, when we're excited about someone, we're vulnerable. So that's natural that you're worried that they like him. But really think about before you vest all this time and trying to get him to like you, how much do you really like him? And be specific about like, is he meeting your needs that you've set yes. for yourself? Well, I want X, Y, and Z. I'm worth X, Y, and Z. I demand this. And he only does like X. But that's okay he's because doing, he's doing X really well. He's really well. He's really good at it. And I like him, but like he's not doing Y and Z or M or Q. And it's like, we keep making excuses. Well, I don't know if I really want that right now. Well, and also I realized too, like, if you're dating guys who were, say, treating you at like a two, and then suddenly you date a guy that treats you at a five, you're like, but he's doing this and this that yeah. this person didn't do. You're like, it's still a five. It's still a five. And that's yeah. what I've realized recently. And I was like, wow, I'm just, I'm, I value myself this little that I'm willing to accept this little amount of and it's, whatever. Know, it's hard to do, but I think the more people, and especially the women listening out there, the more you can just figure out what you want, 
and out of fear of him not wanting it the same way, asserting what you want, yeah. you will attract a lot. I mean- You will attract men who will step up to that yeah. level and get rid of the guys who are not worth your time. Or just not, maybe they're just not ready. Maybe they will come around and you might feel differently when they do and probably will. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's do a few uh, questions uh, with fans. What's your time with me? Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. Sexy questions? Yeah, all questions are sexy. <laughs> sexy. The more you know. Here's some sexy questions with Nick. How are you today? What's all going right. on? Hi, Emmy. Hi. This is Rumor. Hi. Hi. Um, how, what's your question? How can we help? Um, it's sort of a question. It's actually for Nicholas. I'm saying his whole name because I'm annoyed with him, but that's okay. Um, why, why are you annoyed with me? I'm a fan, not a stan, and I just don't agree with some of the things. I've watched, I mean, I've listened to every episode of yours. Thank you. But I don't agree with a lot of the things you say, but um, I still listen because it's entertaining. I, well, I appreciate and, that. Well, it's, this, this podcast is meant to yeah. be conversational. Yeah. And this is not meant for everyone to agree with me, but I... But Can I ask, do you do yeah. you disagree with things that he, his general belief system or or just more questions? Well, I I just don't, I don't know. Like the Demi episode Ugh. like boiled my blood. Why? And, and you know that from my comments on Podbean. But anyway, um, so you had said in one of your... Um, episodes that you wanted to talk to people that are different and I am different. I'm actually trans. Oh, okay. And one of the things that I have a problem with, well, number one, I have a very strong personality. So that's not always the best when I'm dating, but I also have had one of the best transitions I've ever heard of. My friends, my family, my coworkers all support me. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it's been great. But my strong personality comes in because, you know, you guys, I mean, like cisgender heterosexual men, they think that they can say stuff to me that is like, that I will believe. So stuff like, oh, do you want to come over and watch a movie? <laughs> well, it's too bad. I'm not stupid. I know that that's not what you want to do. So... One of my, I guess my main question is, as a hetero, well, I think that you're probably a little bent, but. Um, <laughs> what's what's <laughs> that mean? You better get it, girl. <laughs> we talked about it earlier. Have, what, what's I'm bent sorry. mean? She's like, Do you're bent. Rochelle. What? Hi, Rochelle. I love Rochelle. Like, I was more excited to talk to her. Oh, that's great. Um, can, I, can I tell you something? I, I think having a strong personality is incredible. And I think that, and I struggle with this too, because I'm very outspoken. I'm very forward. Mm -hmm. I've never really learned how to play those like coy games with boys where I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to like text you for three days. I don't understand that. If I like you, I'm very kind of maybe even aggressive sometimes. And yep. Nick and I actually were just talking about this. I think what's important, and especially because you said you have such an incredible support system is realizing yeah. that men that are not going to value you for the strong personality and incredible woman that you are have no business getting any of your energy, truly. True. And, and, and allowing and holding that value for yourself that the people in your life that love you and that you have for yourself will only bring better people who – are willing to meet you at your level and that you don't have to lower yourself for. You know what I mean? That's right. just my two cents. <laughs> I mean, so I, I guess my main question for Nicholas, and I'm not <laughs> calling him Nick, I'm still pissed off, um, is... <laughs> okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what is your... You specifically, you date only cisgender women, Correct. Uh, I apologize for my ignorance because I don't know the, the nomenclature. Uh, when you say cisgender, uh -huh. it you means mean like, like um, straight, like yeah, women. straight women. Why you gotta or, get mad at me? Straight, straight. Why you gotta get mad at me I for guess. admitting my ignorance? 
a woman explain to him. Thank you. Um, <laughs> this gender is basically the opposite of transgender. Okay. So this gender means you, Nick, feel like you're comfortable with your penis. You don't want to. <laughs> I was gonna say something else. You don't want to change your. You can say whatever you want. Um, you're good with you. You're semi-masculine. You you like who you are. Um, transgender is obviously the opposite. So, um, you only date cisgender women. Is that correct? Yeah, that I know of. I mean, I, I mean, yes. I have never, to my yeah. knowledge, dated a transgender person. I mean, I only say that because, like, I know, like, that's a, it's been more of a common topic yeah. and you have, uh, there's people out there and I, you hear stories where this, a, a, a guy, you know, a straight cisgender guy made out with a transgender and he was like, I didn't know that she uh, wasn't, that. Not, it wasn't even a negative necessarily comment, but I'm saying to my knowledge, I've not, I, I've, no one's ever said, oh, by the way, I've, I'm trans or whatever. Yeah. So I, and I don't, uh, I've never, yes. So the answer is yes. So my question is, because I can't ask these morons that I talk to, what would be your trepidation dating a trans woman? Uh, it's a question. Yeah. I, you, me I, again, I'm going to just uh, admit a lot of ignorance in the topic. I don't, uh, does transgender mean you've done a, a, a full transition to, in terms of not or, necessarily. Not necessarily. You could be a transgender and not have had any bottom surgery and yeah. top surgery. There's right. I'm, I don't want to speak out of turn, but you're you're still dang girl. Okay. Um. So there's three <laughs> types of trans women. There's non-operational, which means okay. I'm just gonna say chicks with a dick. Okay. And then there's Great. um pre-operative, which means you're going to get the surgery. And then there's post-operative, which means you've had the surgery. Yeah. Okay. So. So I guess don't ask my name because I'll I'll come through the screen and choke you. What did she say? <laughs> she said, "Don't ask her." That's fine. That's your business, girl. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask you. Um, well, everybody, it's so funny and condescending at the same time. Well, I, listen. All I would say to that is, again, I'm just like at the risk of criticism. Admit that I I think myself, who is I'm a naturally curious person. And I don't know if everyone is, and so even as a natural curious person, I still have a lot of ignorance on the topic. I just don't know. You know, I, I think we've come a long way in our society of becoming more aware of transgenders in general and, and what any of these means, uh, any of these terms mean. Uh, there's still a lot of ignorance out there, but I'm still ignorant in a lot of things. And so uh, I know it can seem offensive and condescending when people do ask questions, but sometimes it's like, I, I literally don't know the answer. And so if I were to meet a transgender and they're in the spirit of trying to get to know them and relate to them, there might be, just be a lot of questions that can come across as ignorant. So there might be that. Yeah. The answer to your question is, I mean, I'm attracted to women and the women's, like like when I'm having sex with a girl, like their her body parts, I find attractive. Uh, you know, yeah, their body parts. I am not attracted to the male genitalia. And so uh, certainly uh, if someone pre-surgery, like, I'm I'm not I'm not into that. That's not a sexual preference for me. So I wouldn't be into that. I've never experienced a, a relationship or a, making out with a transgender person who's post-op, who for all intents and purposes is literally no difference between uh, uh, a cisgender or yeah. transgender. Um, if I'm being totally honest, it, it would be something I'd have to wrap my brain around, and it would be a process of trying to like. I I can't just say that if I found out I made out with a. Uh, hooked up with a transgender person that it would I would be indifferent and I am just admitting ignorance that like or or just being honest that like I it's I've never thought about that and um, I do think that the only way for our society to get there is to continue to have conversations and at the risk of people in your position um, who've already gone through the struggle and 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 listen people in your position like people in my position can't relate to like all the bullshit that you have to deal with and it sucks, but like there's going, there's just a learning process. It's only going to happen over time with more people having conversations and more people asking questions and more people in your position, you know, willing to be patient with the people who are ignorant. 
Um, because otherwise there's just always gonna be a lot of confusion. And when we and in and, and when we and I think bull, like ignorance is a big problem in our world with all the things that are going on in our culture, whether yeah. it's racism or or uh, hate on any minority. And the only way to become less ignorant is to have these conversations and talk about it. Uh, because we're afraid of the things that we don't understand and and to only understand it we have to learn. But so that's where I'm at right now. And and, and this to be totally honest, I I would be kind of, it would be a pro, it would be, I would, I'd be weird about, I'd, I'd feel weirded out about it, you know, if I'm being honest. So my follow-up question is, would you think that you are gay if you are with a trans woman? Um, I say nay, nay, but I'm not a man. No. But I say no. If I was in that position and I was dating a trans man, I would say no. Uh, but see, women opposed much more po- po- trans men though women date trans men more than men um cisgender men date trans women i agree with that i i totally agree with that i think that people are just i I do think that that like nick was saying that i feel even as much as i know i would like to have more conversations and i would like to be more informed because i want to be able to have conversations and not feel like I'm walking on eggshells. I want to be able to communicate with you and talk about and talk with you about your sexual preferences, what you want, what you desire as a woman in the same way that I would with any of my girlfriends and not feel like because Mm -hmm. I'm uneducated that I can't have a conversation with you. And Mm -hmm. I think in the same way, it might just take a little bit of time to get men on the same page of, of understanding because you know, men need a little bit more time than we do to understand things. Yeah, obviously. And also, just <laughs> an interesting point too. Like, I, I wouldn't. No, to answer your question, no, I wouldn't. Cons- if I made out with a transgender person and let's say didn't know, or maybe I did know and they were post op, I know I wouldn't. I'm not gay, so I wouldn't think I was gay. It was interesting too because, like, on Instagram, right? You know, you see a lot of pictures. And you're you're seeing more transgender people uh, create a platform for them, and they're on Instagram. And I I've, I've come across an Instagram picture and been like, damn. And then you click in this person's picture and you realize they're a, a tra- like it's a just a beautiful girl. Like yeah, you're just yeah, like that. So why that, do you have to feel weird about? I'm not okay. uh, saying weird. I'm okay. just saying I'm just being honest yeah. that there's a thought process. Like, oh, that's a transgender person, and then recognizing that I thought that person was attractive as because it, it's a it's a female, it's a woman that I'm looking at and checking out. And so my point of being gay is like, I'm still a, a, attracted to the female form. So if the female, if that, you know what I'm saying? So like, and by the way, are you asking this question? I'm just curious because someone said, oh, if I well, hook yeah. up with you, then I'm gay or something. Right. Because. Exactly. And I was wait. I was kind of hoping he would say yes, secretly, like wicked secretly. But I mean, he gave the right answer. <laughs> because by the way, I think that that's at least from my opinion and correct me if I'm wrong. I think that that's really disrespectful because that's then not acknowledging how you acknowledge yourself. Right. But also Which like, is bullshit. And we talked about this in, uh, this before this episode before you came on. I think people also are still afraid of the identity and the labels and, yeah. and the fear of being called out by their their peers or what that means to them. You have to be comfortable with your sexuality um, because like, I know I like, listen, I'm not, not to sound, I know I'm not gay. So when I did my kissing scene with the guy, I mean, it, the concept was weird. Like when I knew I had to do it, it was like, hey, you're going to have this scene with this guy. I was like, well, I've never done this before. I was definitely a little nervous going in. And then it happened. I was like, it was like, it It was nothing to me because I wasn't attracted to him. He was yeah. very much a guy and it, we looked every bit of a guy and it was like, <laughs> there was just nothing there, right? Uh, and I think when it comes to transgender, I think guys uh, are still wrapping their brain around the concept of what that means and struggling with like self-identifying. There's, yeah, for yes. sure. Even the fact that you have to keep saying, I'm straight, I'm straight, I'm not gay. I'm, I'm I know, just saying, I'm, but just, just that articulating feel, that. No, but I just feel like men feel like they have to be like, no, I'm straight. You know yeah. what I mean? And that, like, if I were get away from gay, that. And that would be fine, you know? But I'm saying to like, I don't, I don't feel bad admitting that uh, pre op, like if a guy's still, like, I'm not attracted to that. And if I were to say make out with a transgender person, and I was turned on by the fact that they still had a penis, I think that that does potentially make someone gay because they're attracted to the penis. They're attracted to that. I don't I know. Don't, I don't agree with that. You don't agree? No. With that? No. Well, no, I, because when you say that, um, 
and I'm not going to attack you because you gave the right answer before. But when you when you say that, we are we are telling you we are trans women. Whatever we have down below is what we have down below for right now. No, so I, I get, I'm not. You, go ahead. And you like us, but we have a penis. Well, the penis isn't going to stay there. No. You know, so well. But by the way, but I have friends. I have certain friends where that they that is a choice where they they don't want to have bottom surgery. So I think for me, the best I would say, just communicating and being like, you know, this is who I am. This is I haven't had bottom surgery. If that is something that you're still interested in, cool. If not, good. And by the way, because. You don't need those guys that are going to be judgmental. Wait, I get that. I'm just, I know you just have, I'm, has, I'm asking questions because, uh, you know, but what I, when my answer to that question before is I was giving an example that I would like, if I made out with a, like a transgender pre-op and the fact that she had a penis it aroused me, it wasn't about her as a person. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's seeing the penis. Like if I had a shot of her lower half and I don't know if it's transgender, it's a penis. And if that aroused me, and I'm aroused by a penis, doesn't that necessarily, you know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about the actual unit of the dick. No, but here, but my only defense to that is like, (laughs) I I don't know. I love, I I love boobs. Right. Okay. So like, but just because I like, I, and I don't know if I would necessarily like, yeah, I I think women's breasts are unbelievable. And I'm, I don't know if I'm necessarily attracted or I don't know how I would classify it, but I don't think that that makes me any, which, way you know what I mean I think it's just like you can be attracted to certain things in the same way people certain people like butts and some people like boobs whatever it may be I get there's a spectrum for sure and I'm not saying obviously like if I if a transgender person pre-op like I'm a transgender I'm a woman I don't think it's right for anyone to say well have you had surgery yet and until you do I'm not going to identify like whatever you want to identify great I'm just saying if I'm attracted to a penis then I would that would confuse me. <laughs> Not you, you know. I think a lot of you do, but that's right. What's that? Um, by the way, I, it just hit me that that's Rumor Willis. Yes. Kind of, <laughs> I love her so much. Are you and okay? Kind of, can, can you, it's just me and you. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, that's 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 good. Good good job. You kind of redeemed. All right. Well, I think honestly, thanks for listening. I would just ask. Yeah, we just need. I would love to have you know, you to use your voice to educate both you know like cisgender females and males because I want to be like I said I want to be able to have more conversations. I want to know what's what's a boundary for you, what works and what doesn't because I'm sure that that changes person to person as well. You know, and you can't just do a broad spectrum like this works for one trans woman and this works doesn't, you know, you're a woman and different things work for me than work for Rochelle. It's just, you know. Totally. Well, can we agree that Nick has all, uh, look at that. You broke me down. I called you Nick. You've always had the positive your entire life until you became a reality TV star. So now you're getting the negative. And I think that's more why you're focusing on it because the person like me, um, I don't want to hear any negative at all. I don't. I want to hear the positives because I'm used to the negative. Um, so I think that too. Because I, I guarantee you, walking down the street, no one said, "Ugh, that ugly guy." <laughs> they were like, "Oh, I have his babies." I, I say that to I, Nick all the time. Yeah, listen, I listen. I say, "Ugh, look at this ugly man." <laughs> <laughs> Too many six packs. Look, is he it, probably sounds like he thought he was a black guy because he does have a nice spot. I will <laughs> admit that Nick. Does have I a nice take spot. a lot of pride in my. I definitely my, objectified Nick when I saw him on Bachelor in Paradise, <laughs> and um, I was like, maybe I'll be friends with him because look at his body. Uh, listen, it's all relative, and I can't. I'm not going to sit there and say that I have like, I'm I'm a white male who's straight. Like it's been pretty charmed in terms of. But like, it is all relative to say that I haven't been criticized. I was voted the most annoying in high school. That hurt my feelings. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I have been called names. I was picked on when I was a kid. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, so like, have I ever got negative comments? Yeah, sure. I mean, has my life been probably a lot easier to get through than other people because of a lot of blessings and fortunate things that I've had? Absolutely. 
but I don't think it's a. Right. I don't think we, we any of us should compete and how our struggle has been. Yeah. Um, I find it fascinating, especially when I'm out in LA and I meet like certain people who I like would admire or like they're famous. And you get to know them and you hear their, and what I've learned having gotten any notoriety at the end of the day, we're all just people and we all have insecurities and we all have our shit. Um, I think we make the mistake sometimes of comparing our shit to other people's shit. It's not a competition. Um, so, you know, I, again, your struggle, I am sure I know has been a, a more burden than mine, but I just don't think, you know, I've. It, you can't compare. Yeah. Everybody's going through I've their dealt own with it. thing. I've dealt with negative comments like as all people have long before I ever went on TV. Okay. <laughs> I guess. I have no choice but to believe you. Right. <laughs> Anyways, I really appreciate you taking yeah, the time. Thank Thanks for you. listening. You're uh, awesome. I appreciate Amy. your honesty. Uh, you, have well, a um, you have a great day. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, what's your name? It's Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Nice to meet you. So I don't know when, let me know when to start. But yeah, thanks again for including me, Nick. I was like a big fan of you doing this podcast. I was listening to you, I think, on like Ashley I's podcast. And like, I was just like, they kept talking. I was like, no, I want to hear more of Nick. I want to hear what he's saying. <laughs> just like guy's perspective. So when you said you were doing one, I was like, yes. Um, so yeah, I've been listening and enjoying Oh, I was it, waiting so. for a butt. I was like, <laughs> see, he's waiting for the negative criticism. Yeah. Anyways, thank you yeah. so much. I really appreciate. I really appreciate it. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, um, so should I just start again? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I wrote in a few months ago. I actually just moved to LA from Chicago, which Nick, I know you're from. Amazing. Um, and I was writing in about Nick. You were talking a lot about like you're looking for marriage. You're 38, 39, however old you are, and like just like having challenges with like the difference between like the girl like you have in your mind that you want to date for marriage versus maybe like some of the girls you are dating and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but some of what you said resonated with me from a girl perspective. Um, sorry. Um, just in the sense that I am also 39 and I haven't been married. I've never been engaged. I've actually never even lived with someone. Um, and I had a lot of serious relationships up until the age of like 30 um, and for, um, maybe I don't even know all the reasons, but ever since then, I really haven't dug into like a really serious relationship. So I've also been dating younger. Um, I know I was thinking about this today off before the call, like why? And so that was one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you guys today. But I know from my own perspective, one of the reasons I've been drawn towards younger guys is I feel like there's like this need with older guys to explain, why are you 39? Why have you never been married? Like, why are you single? And I almost feel like, with younger guys, it's like, I don't know, like less pressure to like explain why I haven't done that yet. So I, my last boyfriend, which I knew I was moving to LA, so I knew that was going to last. The last guy I dated was 24. Granted, I didn't know he was 24 when I dated, like when I met him. Um, but that was just the last person I was like interested in. So Good for you, that's girl. my question. Wait, I don't, <laughs> I'm diving in on this. Hold on. Because, uh, and I'm sure you want a guy's perspective, so I'll give it to you. But so I, I just want to get some clarity. So men that you dated that were older were kind of coming for you a little bit about why you hadn't figured shit out yet? Yeah, and not necessarily just older men, but I feel like, um, yeah, like maybe, I mean, that was one of the things I was thinking that I don't like that. I don't like that, that judgment. Agreed, so like, yeah. I could avoid judgment by dating someone who was more like, let's just have fun and be in the moment versus like all this like pressure. Was that how, um, has, I'm not against it. Did that happen to you multiple times where you felt like older men were kind of que like questioning or, or judging you a bit? Yeah, definitely. I felt like I felt like there must be like something wrong with you, which there probably might be. I don't know. There's but, definitely um, not. Like, <laughs> um, so that was part of it. And then I think also part of it maybe just being in Chicago, but like a lifestyle difference. Like I definitely still like to do like adventurous fun things and I like am attracted to like I don't want to say young energy, but just like a, like a having given up on life energy. Totally. So I don't know. What, uh, what, what do you think your goals are like in the next couple of years? What are you looking for? Um, so I definitely want to be married and have kids because I just don't want to be like alone later in life. Um, but I don't have like this huge, like I need to do it today. Okay. But I'm also 39. So like I do. So <laughs> have you um, thought about freezing your eggs? 
I actually just did my first round a couple months ago. Amazing. So, so you're yeah, totally you're so totally like, like set that way. If that's not something that you're wanting immediately, my position on it, if you care about my advice, but I think is if you're not in a place where you're like, I feel like I need to have kids right now or be married right now, I think it's totally cool that you're dating younger dudes and you're just having fun. Yeah, but I mean, like, the fun needs to, like, wrap wrap up. <laughs> so For sure. I but I hear you, girl. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm with you, too. Like, I want to be, I want to, you know, I want to have kids and I want to be in a serious relationship. I think the difference is, is just... I think that there will be people who are older than you that aren't going to judge you or ask you, Yeah. you know, I think people are just judgmental, but I think it's cool to be whatever age you are and whatever your journey is, is yours and shouldn't be judged by somebody else based on what they think you should have done. But rumor, your sure. mom like married a younger guy, right? And yeah. That was, yeah, I think it's totally True. fine. True, true. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. That's what I mean. Like if you if you meet a guy that is younger, I, I don't think it, the age matters as long as you both are on the same page with what you're wanting. You know what I mean? Like you could find a 29-year-old who's like, listen, I'm ready to be like start a family and be serious and still have fun with you. So I don't think it yeah. should, you know what I mean? Like that's, I think that that's totally available to you. Yeah. I guess I just haven't met a lot of people like myself. I mean, a lot like um, one of my good girlfriends is my age, but a lot, I mean, I don't know, Nick, if you're like this, but I feel like my friends get, get younger and younger because, like, I get a group that marries sure. off. And, mm-hmm. like, so now they're, like, all 28, 29. So, I don't know. I just feel like I'm the only one I know like this right now. So, maybe L.A. will be different. It's, like, Peter Pan syndrome out here. Uh, so, so, I don't know. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Uh, my, my, I think everything Rumor said is, is true. I think there's a couple things just to get into the, the specifics of uh, of your situation and in some ways that can relate. I mean, listen, I, I constantly judge myself. Uh, I'm very hard on myself. I I notice, and I think this is true for all people, that uh, the more we judge ourselves, the more sensitive we are from judgments of others. And sometimes we hear it more because we've already judged ourselves. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think... Um, you know, this whole like younger guy and, and, and older guys, you feel more judged, but there is going to be some truth. And like, listen, there's there's no hard and fast rule. There's no black and white. You can have y- y- mature young people, but, you know, n- it's not as common for a 24 year old guy to, to, to be dating a, a woman in her mid to mid 30s, right? That's just a reality, right? right? And I'm, let, let's just like not pretend that there's not going to be, as a 24 year old guy, there's going to be a novelty in it. So the reason why he's not asking you why. I know why you're like, haven't settled down because he's just excited. He's dating someone in your position. He thinks it's cool <laughs> and it's wild. And he's doesn't, he's not, oh, yeah. he's not really thinking about settle down. He, no, he doesn't give a shit. You know, the, when I, I mean by that. judging yourself is that, listen, I get it all too. Like sometimes people just want to know when they're asking you why you're single, it might not be coming from a place of judgment. It's coming from a place of getting to know you. It feels like judgment because you've already judged yourself. I know this because I do it all the time and I'm also insecure about getting judged. I'm insecure about people asking me, well, why are you single? Is it this because of this? I've already worried about people thinking this about me. And so when they ask it, they don't even necessarily mean it in a judgmental way. I just take it as judgmental because I'm insecure about it. And you're thinking about and that. You're judgment. thinking about yeah. it. So I, I, I only say that because uh, maybe give men your age a break sometimes, I mean, there's a diff. you should know the difference between if they're really like being dicks about it or if they're just trying to get to know you. Usually yeah. you can tell the difference. And if they're just trying to get to know you, um, you know, if you're on a date and so like, tell me about yourself. Why, you know, why do you think you're in this position or not position or like, why, why, you know, have you had past relationships? Why do you think you're still single? It's a fair question. Um, if they say it in totally a way, fair. If, if they say in a way, it's like, well, I mean, you have like a lot of red flags or like, what's your baggage? If they do it in a way like that, then that's a dick. You know, that's that's judgmental. Then they're assuming you have baggage because you're single and whatever. Um, yeah. I, when I when I get asked the question, I am single ultimately because I choose to be. Uh, not everyone sure. I've liked has wanted to go out with me, but I find for the most part when I'm dating, I'm the one who's deciding and this isn't for me. Um, I have become more selective because as I've gotten older, I've honed in on what I want and more yeah. importantly, what I don't want. And sometimes I worry about being too picky because I think I might be, I've narrowed it down too much. 
Um, but ultimately, it's my choice. And I, I, when I get insecure about that, I have to remind myself that I'm in this position because I choose to be. And I sometimes can make better choices and I can put myself in, in, in better positions to get what I say I want and manifest the reality that I want. Um, but I have to not get down on myself and judge myself so that when I do get these questions, and I meet these people, I'm not immediately getting defensive and, and tur- getting turned off by someone who's just trying to get to know me. Um, and I think yeah. deep down we can know the difference, um, about someone trying to get to know you or uh, someone criticizing you. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, no, definitely. I think probably the root of it is like, I don't even know the answer maybe, so I don't want to be asked. <laughs> um, but yeah, I get it. And that's probably a whole other topic for Someone with a degree in something. And, and, listen, and, and <laughs> um, it's true. Like a lot of the friends I grew up with are married with kids, and I enjoy hanging out with them, especially when I go home. And yeah. there are times where I just get bored because, like, they're doing things I don't want to do. And then I sometimes judge myself because I've become friends with people like I relate to and I think are cool, and they're like, and they're like five or six years younger than me. And I think, and it, and to me, it feels weird because I've never been friends with people that much younger than me before. And I just, I, I think, I think about it. I judge myself. I get in my own head and I make it a thing and no one else gives a shit. I don't Uh, care that you're so much older than me. (laughs) And I guess I I do that a lot too. I I did. I was recently told by a young woman that I have a very youthful spirit and she couldn't get over the fact how, Oh God. uh, Oh my God. Why do you guys roll your eyes when I, when I, because, because (laughs) it was a, I she was like, well, thank get you. get over it how youthful I am. I thought it was, I, I mean, if, tell you what, I only said it because it actually, it, it made me feel good. I'm sure. It, and I'm sure. And I, I do, I do judge myself and I do get in my head about it. And it, it does. I and I can. I of him because it's, yeah. I can, I just know too much about you. <laughs> uh, you're the same. You're literally the same. I know. We know too much about each other. This is bad. The same. I don't, is, it, is that helpful? It is helpful. No, I appreciate that. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I think the answer is the date older. I haven't done that yet. So I, I try think- it out. I think the answer is just to keep go out there and and keep having fun and saying yes to life and just trying not to be mindful of judging yourself because I think yeah. usually that's where yeah. the insecurities come from. And my guess is you're probably doing a fair share of that. Totally. Fair bit of that. Cool. And yeah, just, that helps. And maybe Thank just you. respond to the people like, regardless of their age, who makes you happy? Who makes you yeah. feel good? And go yeah. from there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, know the difference between cool. a good time and yeah. a, a, a long term future. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Shay. Yeah. I, All right. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Have a great day. Thank Thanks so much. You too. Well, Rue, it has been a pleasure. Would See, you, I could do this all the time. Well, hey, you, welcome to come Please back. Come back. Come back. All the time. Um, because well, I just feel like we have we have such an interesting. I don't know. We're both like open about stuff and we want to have more discussions that I feel like some people don't want to have. Yeah. So I'm just always like, there's a million other talk topics about dating and relationships that I feel like we could go into for hours. You you know where we are. I know. You're welcome back. Do you have any tips for people who are wanting to, they feel like they self-sabotage, but are wanting to stop doing that? Yeah. I, I've been taking this class recently and the biggest thing that I took away from this class is, and it's it's a hard one to wrap your mind around, so don't get mad at me, is we are responsible for all of the disturbances in our life. And when I started realizing that and looking back, so I was dating someone and had a situation where, kind of similar to what um, Ellie was just talking about, where I felt extremely judged by him. And I felt... And I got really triggered and defensive and I was ready to just be like, fuck you, bye. Like, how could you say that to me? And what I realized is when I was able to kind of get out of a reactive place and track it back was that because I had not expressed myself earlier and expressed boundaries or expressed feelings about a certain thing, I created the whole situation. And so I think kind of like what you were saying, Nick, I think that there's so much of getting triggered by other people because of our own self-judgments. And in terms of self-sabotage, it's so difficult, but I think trying the best you can to 
trust in the value that you have for yourself and knowing that you deserve better and not being afraid to speak your truth or talk about what you need and what you want because you're afraid that someone is going to reject you or abandon you. If you can get to a place where you realize that you will be so much happier if because at the end of the day, you're just delaying the inevitable. If you want something and there's a truth about someone that you're feeling and they're not going to be able to meet that need, then why are you spending time with them? Because they can't meet your need today. They're probably not going to be able to meet it three months, six months, a year from then. And you're better off saving your energy to find someone that's really going to be there to support you and be able to listen and, and value you, I think. But it's hard, man. It's so hard. I want that chocolate cake out of the trash all the time. <laughs> time. I always, I always eat the sour patch kids at the movie theater. I did and that. I, I always ate too feel much gross candy. afterwards. Yeah. Oh, it's too and much. And that's basically dating. <laughs> that is dating. Eating too many sour patch kids at the movies. Don't. Do um, it. Well, I love you very much. Thanks for coming. You too, bud. Um, and uh, we'll, you know, we'll see how the people respond. No, you're welcome. Yeah, back. they'll be like, never have her on your <laughs> no show one, again. No, one, no one's gonna say that. Um, I had a great time. Um, next week, guys. Uh, again, very special episode for myself. Uh, my parents are on, and uh, you know, some of my siblings. And um, I hope you guys enjoy it. And we will see you next week. Have a great week. Bye.